Welcome to the Rewrite Your Story with Tasha Joe podcast, where we fearlessly dive into the vast realm of thoughts, ideas, and conversations that know no bounds. Buckle up and prepare for a wild ride as we venture into uncharted territories and explore the unexplored. On this journey, we leave no stone unturned and no topic untouched. Tune in, fasten your seatbelt, and prepare for a roller coaster ride through the vast expanse of human curiosity. Get ready to be amazed, enlightened, and entertained because on this podcast, there's only one rule there are no rules. Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back. On today's episode, I have a very special guest, Austin. I want to say Austin Nebaker, but you go by Austin Collins. It is Austin Collins. So I was born Austin Collins and okay. I was adopted at five. With That's Nebaker. why. Yes, it is. Okay. So. Yeah, Austin and I have known each other since the sixth grade. We actually dated in sixth grade. And I love telling people this story. I'm not sure if I brought it up that night. But do you remember when we were dating and then we went to a party? Lauren Heine, I think. Yes, I do. Yeah, you blew up balloons. Do you remember this? I sure Because I used to have huge boobs back in the day. And he blew up big balloons and was like, these are my girlfriend's titties. <laughs> uh, what? Oh, I would yeah, never say something that. like that. But we lost touch. And Austin has just been on a journey. Yeah. And so that's why he's here today. Because I don't even know, you know, what he's been up to. And he's got a story to share. And so, Absolutely. yeah, I'm going to pass it on to you, Austin. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all. Tasha, thank you for having me. Of course. This place, by the way, you guys, this space that Tasha has culminated and the culture here and everything that she's doing here, it's just above and beyond. I mean, I was blown away when I walked into the space. It's huge. It's huge. Tasha, it's 5,000 square feet. Like, holy smokes. I know. People, you know don't, what I'm people don't realize that when they come in, they're like, oh my God. Cause it's got all the hidden, like, nooks and crannies, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I pull up in my truck, I come in here, and I'm like, okay, the front area is super professional. Thank you. It smells great, crisp, everything's nice, professional. And then it's like, it keeps oh, going, this hallway, and going, this and going, and going, <laughs> and going. And I'm like, holy cow. I know. What do we got in this? What do we have behind <laughs> door number three? Right. <laughs> and it's just, but everything is beautifully decorated Thank and you. orchestrated. And it's all got flow and it's all got rhythm and it's got just beauty all around it. And and I appreciate that kind of stuff. Thank so, you so yeah, much. Yeah, it's really cool. So, so yeah, before, <laughs> we get, before we get started, I have some gifts. That I want to give you Aww. because any proper guest on a podcast show should bring gifts. You guys, okay. listen up. <laughs> if you come on to Tasha's show, you better bring her gifts, okay? Oh, my gosh. Am I ready for this? <laughs> well, it's nothing crazy. Okay. It's just some, some okay. little things. Okay, so I'll give you the whole bag. Okay. Okay. Thank so, you. But I'll do this first. So okay. here's a card. Oh, Austin, There's you're so sweet. You can open that later. There's not a whole lot in there. A okay. card and a pen. But okay. everything else. Let me you... open that later. Yeah. There's just okay. some just some things you can kind of put you around the office. You are so sweet. Give yourself the gift of time. Take time to breathe. Oh my God, Austin. This is. Oh, it's a little. Um, what are they called? They're dice. Dice. It looks like one of those. Oh, that is no. Nope. There's dice in there. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, wrong I ruined that is a timer or what yeah, are they called it's uh, just a sand yeah uh, yeah oh, I don't that's know what awesome. they're called. I love that and I don't Hour have glass. one hourglass it's thank an you. hourglass thank you you're welcome mindfulness dice oh my gosh you are so sweet I love the oh we're gonna have to totally use these Ooh. I don't have anything and people give me gifts and stuff but here you feel like you've seen it all or like my artists and then yeah. I'm like I don't have this I don't have this yeah well it's like Thank important you. to like just have knickknacks so like when you have it's guests beautiful. on you're like yeah people are like oh where'd you get this and you're like well one of my podcast yes. guests brought it to me are these matches they are I love what it says I feel sorry for people who don't know me and I thought about you because <laughs> oh um, my god because earlier today to prep for this podcast yeah. I was listening to some of your other podcasts and I said you know what that's perfect for Tasha and anybody else who comes on here because mm. really if you think about it I feel sorry for anybody who doesn't truly know yeah who it is that they're speaking to yeah just in yeah. general you know what I mean uh, that's you a are big so deal. thoughtful oh my god there's so much stuff in here it's kind of a lot a candle oh my, I love candles as you can tell I have uh, them burning I would have got green if I would have if they would have had it they didn't but blue and green are my favorite colors Boom. so there you go Okay. This smells so amazing. It's good. I'm going to light it right now. Let's so get we, it. Yeah. I like Thank it. you, Austin. That's you're so sweet. You are welcome. I'm oh. I'm just still blown away. We got antlers. We got mirrors. We got freaking <laughs> lights and all, the all things. sorts of stuff. Incense. 
I feel it's oh, like yeah. it's like it's the, a vibe. It is. It's great. I'm it gonna really like is. this because it smells so good. So but, if you guys okay, don't know, okay. Tasha's <laughs> Tasha's got some serious things going on here. I walked in and I thought I walked into a full blown jewelry store. She's got all sorts of merch and everything going on here, and uh, she's lighting. Yes, lighting this candle, and let's set an intention. Let's do it. What do you want your intention to be? My intention is this: that this podcast just opens some eyes and ears because we're the right people. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we're going to get into some things that may be a little bit dark. We're going to get into some light. We're going to get into some things that are are very very prevalent in today's day and age. Oh, and so I, love I think it. that that's something that we should be thrown out to the universe or God or whatever you believe in. Yes. I'm a God yes. guy. I'm a Jesus guy. Okay. Okay. okay? That's... I'm just I believe it's all the same. It's all a higher power and whatever whoever you want to pray to. So, yep. Same thing. I don't discriminate. Yeah. I don't discriminate. Oh, For me, thank you, Austin, so you're very, much. very welcome. You are very oh. welcome. This Let candle smells amazing. Just put this. So now let's get into you. <laughs> I'm dying to know your journey. So what do you want? You want me to start from the very beginning? Because yeah, Tasha just... Joe's going to show up in there briefly. <laughs> okay, yeah. I want right. to hear it all. I haven't caught up with you in years. I mean, yeah. the last I heard was probably... Years ago, I ran into your mom, and she had said that you were homeless and living on the streets. So yeah. that's the last. Yes. And then I ran into you at RJ's fight, and mm-hmm. you look great. You seem like you're doing really well. And so, yeah, I want to know what's been going on. Yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll kind of just, what I'll do is I'll just brief background. Okay. And then I'll, I'll, I'll slowly fast forward into the knit in the gritty. That okay. way we're not here for 18 hours. Okay. Because it would take that long to tell yeah. the whole story. And but. we'll be doing plenty of episodes. I'm so excited. Austin is so pumped to be recording. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yes, excited. I'm looking for people who are excited to record. Yeah. So I'm a I'm a podcast guy. So oh, I yeah. listen to podcasts. You have the podcast voice too for oh, it. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah, so I actually I was born at Harrison Hospital before it is no longer Harrison. It's now uh, St. Michael's. Okay. Right? Which I don't is know my middle know. name, oh, Michael. Okay. My dad's name. Awesome. Good name. <laughs> yeah. And I love your dad, by the oh, way. Oh, yes. The, the, I obviously don't have a huge background with your dad, but he was yeah. always very cool. Yeah, Same he thing still with your is. Mom. Your parents He's the man. The, your parents were freaking the shit. Yeah, Let's they're pretty rad. <laughs> so, um, born there, grew up, born and raised here. Uh, my mom, when when I was born, she was a single mom of one. Okay. Then I... Adam, okay, you know, yeah, you know Adam, mm-hmm. who lives in Arizona right now, and he's okay. got a kid, and he's got the whole thing, and he's doing really good down there, and we'll get good. into that later. Okay, um, but yeah, I was uh, born at Harrison, and then born and raised here, and then fifth grade, Silverdale Elementary. Oh yeah, that's where we met. <laughs> yep. So I moved around a lot uh, early on, and then kind of landed in Silverdale Bremerton area. Okay. Right? So and then. Fifth grade is when I came to Silverdale Elementary, Dolphins, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and um, and that's where we met. Yeah. Right? Fifth Long grade? Long time ago. Fifth grade, I think? I think it was fifth grade, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Rock. And then my sixth grade teacher was Mrs. Wick. I still remember them. And I, I actually ran names. into Mrs. Wick maybe four or five years oh ago. Oh, my God. And I ran up to her and I said, Mrs. Wick, do you know who I am? <laughs> oh, my God, that's she so said, awesome. She said, no, I don't. I said, I'm Austin Nebaker. <laughs> and she goes, oh, my gosh. Because you remember, I was a troublemaker back yeah, then. I was kind of just like an attention guy. Yeah. And I just always always wanted the spotlight on me, you know. And so I ran up to her. I gave her a hug and I said, hey, I just want to let you know I appreciate everything you did for us. Yeah. And I know that being a teacher isn't something that is easy, especially me being 36 years old, almost 37. I was listening to your podcast here and you're like, hey, everybody, uh, you know, I'm Todd, blah, 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 so and so. And I'm 37 years old. And I'm like, she's 37. I'll be 38 in September. What in the world? When is are you going to be 37? August. Oh, so we're a year apart. Oh, that's right. You were old, I'm, I'm young a for, younger. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So are you a Leo? Leo. Leo. Right here, okay. Check it out. I Boom. love. There yes. It is. I Come love on. Leos. Oh my gosh. So yes. with that being said, Mrs. Wick gave her a hug, said hi, bye. We'll, we'll uh, Tasha and I had our stint of dating in fifth and sixth <laughs> grade, so whatever that looked ago. like. All right. We don't have to get into all yeah. that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, to be honest. You got to think about it, though. Fifth and sixth grade. So I'm young. a parent Babies, now. yeah. I have a 13-year-old, Tasha. Wow. Is that sixth grade? What That's is the age? Eighth for... grade. Is it? She's almost in high school. Damn. I'm thinking 
Damn. When I was in when yeah. I was in high school, I was doing some things that weren't so great, mm-hmm. right? So I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. But my daughter, her name's Layla. She's 13. Okay. She is the most well. Uh, she carries herself. She's so uh, mature for her age. Mm-hmm. Like, and I got so lucky because she doesn't even want a cell phone. Wow. She's like, I don't want Good a cell phone. Good for her. Yeah. I'm Good like, for her. what? Can I please get you one, though? Because I need to be able to yeah. get a hold of you. <laughs> okay. But the fact she doesn't want one, that's she incredible. She doesn't. She doesn't. And she has one, and it has like four numbers, and it's got me, it's got her grandma, it's got her uncles. In and... case of emergencies. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, what, what, like, what mindset is she in at 13 years old yeah. to not want a cell phone? Well, I can tell you, she's probably looking at her friends who have them. She's probably looking at adults who have them, the people around her that have them. And and she's probably going, I don't want that. Yeah. Which is crazy at 13 years old. Which is incredible. Because if I was 13 years old oh, in yeah. today's day and age, I'd be like, give me the best phone you yeah. got. I want oh, it yeah. all. I remember being like, I want the most expensive one or that one. <laughs> you know, like, I, yeah, but good for her. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's like, I don't know. I just... I don't understand it really. You're but a proud dad. I'm very proud of her. Yeah. Very, very proud of her. She's not a sports gal. She's kind of more into drawing and art. Good. And the vibes, right? I love her already. <laughs> <laughs> She's awesome. Oh. And then I also have a almost three year old in July. Her name is Evie. Oh. Evie oh, Grace. That's my, well, so my ex has two kids and I'm like stepmom to them. Yeah. And it's Evie Jane Ooh. and EJ. Yeah. So I love that name. Yes. Evie Grace is her name and she's a little spit fire tornado Tasmanian devil <laughs> wrecking ball, which is the complete and total opposite of her older yeah. sister. You yeah. Know? And so it's like, it's pretty cool to see the contrast, the differences between yeah. the two because, man, that little girl is going to be. Problem, yeah, yeah. Problem, problem, <laughs> oh, I know? love it. And uh and yeah, so it's just like it, I'm very very fortunate to be able to be a part of their lives even yeah. so. And we'll get into kind of like the integrated portions of like in and out of their lives, yeah. being homeless, being yeah. doing good, I'm dying to know. And all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um so we'll flash forward to let's see, CK High School. Okay. Which we both went to. Yep. Your younger sister went there. Yeah. My older brother went there. Yeah. My younger brothers went there. Oh, no. My younger brothers went to Bremerton and Olympic. So I have, and I don't know if you know this, but I have, so it goes from oldest to youngest. You know Nick. Yeah. So it goes Nick. Nick, Adam. Adam. Then it goes me. Mm -hmm. And then it goes Jeremy. And then it goes Derek, who just passed away last year. And we'll get into all that. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Yep. And then it goes Dylan. Okay. And then it goes... Haley and Holly. Wow. And I used to babysit Haley and Holly. Yeah. Oh, wow. How old are they now? In their 30s. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> no way. I just, I still have a vision in my mind of like how Haley small they were. Haley got into modeling and Holly got into other wow. things. And so it's just crazy. But yeah it's, yeah, it's wild when you think about it, like how the, the mirror. Time of, flies. The mirror of time. Yeah. Right? It's it goes like by the, so fast. The mirror of time is crazy. And I love the name of this place, the Mystic Thank you. Movement. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like a perfect name for this place. Thank because you. Because it is a movement, and it's a movement that should have happened a long time ago. Yeah. But here Tasha Joe is. <laughs> Here's Tasha Joe, and she's yep. in the- Just doing it, like, not knowing what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. She's spearheading the movement. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it. And <laughs> I love you. it. And I'm glad to be a part of it here right now. So- The universe works in mysterious ways. Surely. Brings people back in. And, you know, I am going to say- I manifested you doing this podcast because I know we talked when I saw you at mm. RJ's fight, mm. but then I reached out to RJ and I was like, hey, do you have Austin Nebaker's number? And he's like, who's that? You know, <laughs> not knowing you go by Collins. Yeah, yeah. But then I was thinking about it so bad because I was like, I want to do a podcast episode with you just and so you can get your story out there. Yeah. And then you called me this morning. Yeah. That is a perfect example of manifesting. When you put those feelings out there it's all vibrations like i channeled you and you call me you're like hey when we do that podcast i'm like because Fuck yeah. because i remember at the fight talking yeah. to you and you were sh- like okay you have conversation i'm so i'm good at picking up vibes yeah you clearly are yeah right mm-hmm. that's just part of my deal yeah but when you and i talked is like it's kind of like we didn't even skip a beat yeah 
And then we were kind of locked into this uh, conversation about podcasting, mm -hmm. right? And the things that you were interested in. And we both I, lit up. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was super interested right away. And it was like the fights disappeared. Everybody around us disappeared. And here we are. We're having this conversation about podcasting and things that you're doing. And I was super interested. And so being here now is awesome. And to hear you say that is yeah. awesome. And I just remember going, I got to get in there. I yes. got to get in there. And oh, I remember I sending it. you a message on Facebook and then. Which today, I never got. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I was like, you know what? Let me just Google. I just remember the word mystic. I don't remember it being movement, but I was like mystic, uh, like homeopathic Bremerton. Is that how you found my number? Yes, yes. Oh, no way. I figured it was, because didn't I give you my card? You probably. But I still, I haven't it. opened it yet. Oh, I still have okay. it. It's like a so trinket. It. Okay. No, it's just sitting on my desk. It hasn't okay. been opened yet. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to no open way. it. No way. You Googled it. I love it. I swear. I Googled yeah. mystic, like homeopathic healing or something like that. Oh my God. And boom, yours was the first one that popped yeah. up. And, and it was like mystic movement. I was like, that's what it was. And then I saw the number. It was a 649 number, right? 621. Okay. Or 6456. Six, 6456. Yeah. Six, I just six. gave my name. Well, it's all over Google <laughs> and the internet. So yeah. whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, call Tasha Peterson. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I called the number and then I, I was like, okay, let me just hear this voicemail. And it was you. Yeah. Right. And so I could kind of tell maybe it was a business cell phone. And type I'm situation. so glad you left your, uh, left a voicemail because yeah, my phone is the shop phone and I get so many numbers oh, that call me. Yeah. So unless you, it, you got to leave me a voicemail or else, you know, I won't call you back. My buddy, yeah. Ryan Denny, who you should 100% have. I think I here. know that name. He went to CK. Okay, he was yeah. 03. So okay. he would have been two years. I do know him. Two grades older than us. Okay. And, um, he is a business entrepreneur uh, specialist, okay. the baddest of the baddest men on the planet when it comes to entrepreneurship, business, uh, just ethics and and planning, logistics and and uh, marketing, oh, I need networking. To meet up with him then. He would come on here in a minute, especially awesome. if I told him send him my way. Yes. We can even do multiple people. All uh, of us absolutely can be doing it. Yeah. and. Because he's one of, I was telling you before the podcast, I said, Tasha, like, I've been trying to do a podcast for a minute. Yeah. I have, multi, like, three or four friends that are, like, kind of like us, right? Yeah. They're about the vibes. They're about working hard. They're yeah. about just talking to people, networking, the whole kit and caboodle. And Ryan's one of those guys. Okay. So Ryan owns Trash Transporter, and then he does he does demolition and, um, and junk removal. Okay. But he's been doing it longer than anybody else in the area. Okay. But on top of that, he does, he's like networking big time. Awesome. Right. So he's got a Definitely couple side businesses. Up with him. Yeah. He does yeah. a couple side businesses where he runs a couple networking like businesses. Okay. Where he just links people up all day. Cool. Right. Send and him my way. Super legit. Real estate, all that stuff. <laughs> awesome. So, Ryan, shout out to shout Ryan. Shout out to Ryan Denny. Denny. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, yeah. So. Let's, I'll pull it back. Okay. We'll get back into the, into the timeline here. So we got Silverdale Elementary, Dolphins, whoop, whoop, me and Tasha dated. I don't remember how long it was, but it was I awesome. I don't either. <laughs> I still have memories. Clearly yeah. you do too. Moving forward, we get into CK Junior High and High School. I wrestled. Yep. I remember that. I was a wrestler, which was like my, oh, it was kind of like one of those bittersweet things, you know, like it's, it was a. Anybody who has wrestled understands, like, and has actually wrestled, wrestled, like, mm -hmm. um, understands how hard it is. Yeah. And I tell people this all the time that wrestling, if it weren't for wrestling, I don't know that I would still be alive today. Wow. Because wrestling is something that, like, you're pushing your body. Yeah. Past the point of failure. Like, you're in a position where your body has nothing left to give. Yeah. And that's daily, right? Okay. And, but yet your mind, right? The power of the mind mm -hmm. is pushing your body to reach new heights daily. Yeah. Pushing it further and further and further and harder and harder and harder. And at a young age, you know, I'm 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. And I'm, you know, whatever I'm weighing in at and I got to cut weight and I got to, starve myself and I got to make sure that I make weight for, for my wrestling meet or tournament or yeah. whatever it is. And you learn a lot about yourself in those moments. You learn a lot about what are you made of, right? Okay. What am I Austin Collins yeah. made of, but I'm not a quitter. Mm -hmm. I found that out. 
But I'm not a quitter because I had people to my left and people to my right, including my coaches, my family, my brother, my other brothers that I wrestled with. Yeah. Who were there to push me along the way. Wrestling was a huge portion of learning what it means to expand the mind in a way that is not, uh, it doesn't make sense to the normal human being. Okay. Okay. So imagine this, and I, and I, I want to make this a point in this because it, it, it will reflect to where I'm at right now. Okay. So I'll bring it back around okay. in about four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We may have to break this up into two parts, but that's okay. We'll see how it goes. So when early on in junior high school, my brother wrestled. My brothers wrestled. My younger brothers wrestled. Adam, right? Adam Adam wrestled. wrestled. Okay. He was very good. Okay. Uh, My younger brothers, Dylan and Derek, wrestled. Okay. And it was just kind of part of the family culture, right? We didn't. We were a very poor family, both sides. Okay. And, And so my mom, growing up, she was very, very good at making do, mm-hmm. right? Waste not, want not. Like, what do you got? You got a school project? Okay, we're going to use this, this, and this. We're going to do She was very artistic. She was very good at budgeting. She was very good at making things work with very little amounts of money. Yeah. And back then, I was like, this is some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I remember you guys were living on Chico. Is yeah. she still there or no? She is in Erland's Point. Erlen's point. Okay. Now, okay. Gotcha. But I actually, until about maybe a month ago, yeah. I was on Chico, four doors down from the house that I oh grew up gosh, in. Oh my gosh. No way. Yeah. The difference is I was on the water this time. So it was super okay. nice that you opened my back door. Boom. There's the Puget State. So it was really awesome. nice. But three doors down, you had, I don't know if you remember Jessica Lindsay. Yep. Yep. You remember Austin Templeton? Yep. Okay. All yep. these people, they yep. were right. And they were my, oh my neighbors. Gosh. Right? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It was like a time capsule yeah. had been opened and I was just standing in it, but nobody's there anymore. Just me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, it was, uh, so with wrestling, it just, it taught me a lot about, Hey, here you are. You're this individual. You're a human being. Everybody's a human being around you, but I'm looking at guys that were older than me, guys that were younger than me. Yeah. And everybody's just being pushed to their absolute maximum physical capabilities, right? Okay. And then we were lucky because we had good coaches. And CK's always been known for the wrestling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we we had really good coaches and they always would this is some bullshit, by the way. I hated it, but yeah. looking back on it, I, I'm thankful for yeah. it. Our coaches would get us to the point of complete and total muscle failure, mind failure. No, like you're not drinking water. You're not doing shit. It's at four, killing yourself, right? Daily. Yeah. yeah. After six hours of sitting in a desk all day, which is, oh, we can yeah. get into that later. I yeah. think it's crazy. But, yeah. You know, and then we're on the mat and we're just getting, I'm just getting beat up by guys that are twice my size and. And then at the end of practice, you're just like, oh, thank God. You're looking up at the clock going, it's almost Mm -hmm. over. And the coaches will go, if you're a real, (laughs) if you're a real champion, get down and start doing push-ups and bear crawls. And they would say, oh, get down. And they would just start calling out all of these exercises and drills. And we used to do this thing called the water drill where you would just, all you do, you whoever your partner was that day, and it would be different every day usually, but. And you would just, you would go live wrestling. And if you've ever, if anybody out there and you guys out there listening know, if you've ever gotten into some sort of altercation in your life and you've had to go full bore with another human being, it's the most draining thing. Cardio wise, mentally, you're freaking freaking out, like all that stuff in the world. Yeah. Right. Like there's, I've, I've experienced a lot of life. Yeah. From every aspect, every angle, but that is one thing that I'm just like, man, I have the wrestling was tough, mm-hmm. but I'm thankful for it now looking back on it and even moving forward because there's been moments in my life, even recently, but even the last 15, 20 years, yeah. how long have we been out of high school now? Oh God. 2005 we graduated? Yeah. So 20 years. Yeah, almost, that's, dude. Wait, do we have a reunion coming up? Yeah, we do. You better, you better be it. planning it. Oh my god. <laughs> you should be. Who does plan it? I don't know. 
But people who are in ASB, maybe, or I don't something? know. Probably, like, one of the Bear Bowers. But we, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shout out to Trent, Ricky, it's Bear Trent, Bauer. Trent, Ricky, Haley, <laughs> Haley Rachel, Rachel. All of them. They're a bunch oh of savages. <laughs> yeah. But, no, we probably do have a reunion coming up. I think so. Next year. Interesting. One, two wow, years, two be, decades. Yeah, that'll be We're kind of so fun now. Damn old. I know. It's I love crazy. it. But, you, you look know, good though for being thanks, so twenty you. years graduated. Oh my gosh! Whenever I tell people I'm thirty seven, almost thirty eight, they literally think I'm lying. Everybody thinks I'm like twenty eight, and I'm like, sweet, I'll take it. Yeah, one, I think that's how I act. Too. I'm right there with you. Yeah, except you do I not got, look it either. I have a little scruff right now, but like, okay, I went to Hawaii a few weeks ago. Uh huh. And it doesn't matter what I'm doing. Everybody's like, okay. I'm doing a job. I was telling you about this before for Agape. And the executive director, her name's Sarah. She's awesome. Shout out to Sarah. She's the bomb diggity. She's (laughs) awesome. She's the most gangster freaking like executive that I've ever met. Right. Just doesn't take shit from anybody, but knows how to run a business with 50 employees. Nice. Federal. Yeah. Like prevailing wage type stuff. And she's awesome. But she's like every time I go in there and I go in there once a week just to say what's up. Yeah. And she's like. Oh, look, the baby's here. The little baby's here. Because every time oh I show gosh. up there, I usually have a shaved face. But she's yeah. like, you look like you're freaking 12 years old, yes. dude. What are you doing I don't in know here? what it is, but any man, I love scruff. Like, the baby face, like, my ex-husband would always have to shave for working at Banger <laughs> and stuff. I'm like, oh, my God, you look so much younger. So I like the scruff, for sure. Um, I'm, I had a real hard time early on yeah. growing the scruff. Yeah. But as I get older into my almost 40 years old Tasha Joe. <laughs> I'm almost 40 years old, and I'm just now able to but grow the scruff I'm, out. I'm owning it. I'm not afraid of it. I'm ready to rock it. Like, I'm not afraid of getting older. I feel like we're in our prime. Your 20s, you're just still a child. You're still growing. You're a baby. And, like, 30s, for, I'm ready for 40s. I don't have any yet. Bring on the 40s. Yet. Tasha like, hey, Joe says bring go. on the 40s. Yeah, let's go. I like it. Yeah. We're in there. So, so yeah, wrestling. Uh, Keep going. I'm just moving your hand from the okay, mic. Okay, because I keep tapping. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Just, it's okay. Um, so, yeah, we got uh, wrestling. And, yeah, wrestling taught me a lot. And I'll tell you what. Actually, okay, here's, here's a fact. Okay. I think there was someone you dated before me. His name Who? was Rory Hamill. Yes. Okay. Rory Hamill. I love Rory. Oh. <laughs> Are you ready for this story? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Oh, my gosh. I love that family, the Hamels. Rory was whooping my ass in wrestling. Really? Just, he was wrestling? He, I wrestled. Okay. It was my first match. Oh, wow. As a seventh grader, and he was a freshman. Okay. All right. So I was varsity as a seventh You're grader. You're right. He was my first boyfriend, and then you were my second. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. And I knew that at the time. Yeah. We weren't yeah. dating anymore then, but yeah. I knew that. I was like, I got to get this mother effort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. <laughs> so we are at Clahalia for a wrestling meet. It's my first one. Tasha, I'm seventh grade. We're in seventh yeah. grade. I'm a baby. Yeah. I'm wrestling a freshman in high school. Wow. Right? I look over at him. He's got muscles. He's got, he's good looking. I'm like, this son of a bitch. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) That was so long ago. Oh my God. (laughs) So I'm like, okay, but I'm on varsity as a seventh grader, which is, I'm, I was proud of that, you know, because I, it didn't just come freely. I had to beat like three other guys out for that position. Yeah. So. We're at Clahalia. Clahalia was a new school back then. Yeah. But it was a big deal because at Clahalia, the lights would come down. They had one spotlight that would come down over the mat on the basketball court. Okay. So you have your basketball court, you have your wrestling mat, and then you had a light that they would be able to lower down, which was super high tech. Yeah. There. It was a spotlight. The entire place was dark. Their stands, their everything. Yeah. There's two, three, four hundred people, whatever it was. The stands were always full. People standing around the mat. You had your coaches, your wrestlers warming up. You had parents. You had kids. You had ASB. You had concession stands. You had everything. And here I am, little old Austin Nebaker back in the day. (laughs) 95 pounds. Oh, my goodness. Okay, 95 pounds. And who am I going up against? My ex girlfriend's ex boyfriend. <laughs> oh my God, I don't even remember that. But the fact that it's so funny what we remember, oh, yes, you know? Yes, yeah. yes. And I'm like, I got to freaking get this guy. But I knew going into it, I'm looking over and I'm, I'm just like, I'm so scared. Yeah. Tasha. I'm so scared. 
And oh uh, and I'm like looking out over at him, warming up and stuff. And I'm just like, shh. My brother's like, don't even look over there at him. He's like, you're gonna f this dude. You know, my brother Adam's yeah. trying to get me all worked up, and I'm just like, dude, I'm about to get my ass whooped <laughs> over here. This is my first wrestling match, you know. Yeah. And so we get in there. So he was your very first match. Very ever. first oh, wow. match okay. ever. Okay. And he was like three and a half years older than me. Wow. You know, and we were both 95 pounds. By oh the my way. god. I was gonna say because he was smaller yeah. back then too. Yeah. Okay. But he was much bigger than me. Yeah. And I was just like, damn it, dude. So. He gets in there, and so back then, I think it was three one-and-a-half-minute or two-minute rounds. I can't remember. It was so long ago, but mm-hmm. for three straight rounds, Rory Hamill whooped my ass, beat the freaking brakes off of me. Oh, my God. But I be, I was the victor. Yeah. And ready? So yeah. this is a this is a life lesson here. Don't ever give up. Never. Never give up on anything in life because you never know when your time's going to come. Yep. Don't ever quit on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. Even if life is beating the brakes off you, even if Keep you going. think that you have no chance whatsoever, there's always a chance. Not until the fat lady sings or the whistle yep. blows. Yep. And here's why. So in wrestling, you have what's called a tech fall. So you either get pinned or some guy puts your shoulders down to the mat and pins you mm-hmm. right that's that's like the best way to win yeah the most embarrassing way to win is if you're getting beat so badly that the ref has to stop the wrestling match because you're losing so bad okay and they're just like hey we got to just call this thing this this kid has a zero chance yeah i was one point away from that rory hamill was whooping my ass so bad it was like 14 to 1 which is like at, at once you get a 15 point lead back then yeah the ref just blows the whistles and says hey that's it that's been enough embarrassment oh my right? god okay so there's 20 something seconds left and i have all this on camera oh my god i have to see this oh my i have to gosh. see this my mom had a broken hip at the time so she had her cane and she's like slamming the cane oh down on the god. bleachers <laughs> you can hear it in the background and then she peed her pants after i beat him and then everybody, even the people on the other side, rushed the mat and grabbed me and picked me. It was crazy. So there was like 20 seconds left. Rory's beating my ass, just beating the brakes off me. And he shot in for a, a takedown. And I gave him a cross face. And I like, I didn't break his nose, but I like busted his nose up. So he started ble- bleeding. Yeah. And uh, so the ref stops it. They, he goes to his corner. I go to my corner. My coach is like, dude, you're getting your ass beat out there. And I'm like. Thanks, coach. I know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. What am I supposed to do? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, great, great. I'm looking over at my brother and my mom. And they're just throwing their hands up like, we don't know. You're just losing badly right now. Yeah. You got to do something. And uh, and so we go back. We start. And um, because it was the first nosebleed, we start back where we were at, which is, I think he had like top position. I was bottom position. Ref blows the whistle. I escape, get a point. So it's like two to 14 at this point. Still, there's like not a lot of hope, but I'm not giving up. I escape. He shoots in again. I give him another cross face, knock the tampon out of his nose. Oh my God. Right. Cause they, that's what they yeah. used to do. Yeah. And his nose starts bleeding. Ref calls it again and says, okay, blood time. And, um, but this time, because it was two times in a row, the penalty's on him because, it's basically causing a break in the action because okay. of what bloody knows, even though I'm the one who caused it. Yeah. And so he's, he looks at me and he look, the ref looks at me, looks at my coach and he goes, coach, up, down or neutral. And I look at my coach, I'm like, what do I do? And he's like, go neutral, which is both of us standing up. And I think there was 18, 25, somewhere in there seconds left. We started, ref blows the whistle. I go in, I throw him in a head and arm, which is basically a hip toss. So I gra- grab his, his shoulder, his arm, and I just... Right onto his back, and I pinned him with like two seconds left. I wow. pinned him, Tasha. Wow, your ex boyfriend <laughs> got <You> pinned him, <laughs> right? And oh and God. everybody erupts, everybody goes crazy, and I have proof of it, which is the best because oh I my use gosh. this story. I definitely I use, need to see that. I'll 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 get it and send it to you. Yeah. And so I use this story even today, even when I would teach Bible studies at the mission house, or I would be in church preaching, or yeah. whatever it is. Sometimes I would use that story to paint this picture that, hey, life's going to beat you. Yeah. Life's going to throw things at you that are hard to handle. It's really, really difficult sometimes. Just when you think you can't take any more, you can. 
You can take more. That is the exact moment you have to push through. Yeah. I encourage that to people all the time because the universe is going to shake shit up to see if you have it in you to make it through that final push. And we do. Yeah. And we do, but a lot of people... A lot of people give up. They give up and they don't know. They don't yeah. know that they have that part of yeah. them. Which is why I always encourage people. I say, if you're not doing a martial art right now, go out and do jujitsu. Go out and do wrestling. Go yeah. out and do karate. Go out and do anything. Any type of Pilates or yeah. yoga or anything where it's a, there's a culture, there's a community, and there's physical exertion to yeah. where it's going to allow you to build a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got going on right here, Thank Tasha Joe. <laughs> Thank you. you know, I know, and I'm really dying cool. to know how you ended up in the, I want you to keep telling you, but I'm over here sitting here like okay, anxious. I'll, like... I'll, I'll go, I will, <laughs> I'll flash forward. And then if we do another, if we do another podcast, yeah. I will. When we, can, we do another when podcast. When we do another <laughs> podcast, we can go back. We'll do like a specific episode just on like certain things too. But yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm curious. On so. There's a couple things that I have to talk about. Okay. And one of them is when I was, when I was, so I moved to Arizona. Okay. After high school. To live with Adam? We did. Okay. Yes, okay. I did live with Adam. Okay. And then, and you know, Brandon Brown. Yep. And you know, Trevor Lane. Yep. Me, Brandon, Adam, and Trevor all got a place in Scottsdale. Okay. Uh, Trevor... Adam and Brandon were all working. I was going to Scottsdale Community College. Mm -hmm. And we had a place in Scottsdale for about a year. Prior to that, Adam and I lived with our aunt and uncle, Brian okay. and Christine. Oh, and I, I remember them. You remember them yep. the best. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I love them. They just, they yeah. were so cool. They're still the same. Did they have kids? Did I babysit for them? Yep. I did some. You sure yes. did. Yes. And it was right. Andrew and Christian. Yes. Okay. Wow, and they're so in ago. their like mid 20s now. Wow. Oh, my Stallion, goodness. Stallion, wow. Stallions, by the way. Crazy. Absolute stallions. Andrew became like a professional scooter or skateboarder type guy. Okay. And then Christian is jacked now. Wow. Just this big bodybuilder. Wow. They're, they're both studs. Yeah. And so, yeah, moved to Arizona. And uh, when I was down there, I got into, I worked at a car wash. And because I, basically what happened was I was, before I moved down there, I was supposed to join the military. So I okay. went to MEPS. I went through the whole thing. I went to the recruiter. I was going to be, uh, I got, I was going to do special forces because when you go into a recruiter's office and they hear, oh, you wrestled? Boom. The first thing they're trying to do is getting you into special forces, yeah. right? Because okay. most of their special forces people come out of wrestling or football or some mm -hmm. sort of tough sport. And that's what I was doing. And the reason why I did it is because my brother was in Iraq when I, when I okay. went to the recruiter. So Nick... He was in Iraq in 01, 02, I think, or 03, okay. 04. And then he was in Iraq 07, 06, okay. I think. And he was EOD, which is Explosive Ordnance Disposal. Got it. So he, all he did for 18 months, two tours, was drive around in a convoy, which is multiple Humvees driving in a line together. And he would go and look for bombs, wow. roadside bombs. Wow. That's what he did. And he, you would, you should have him in there because Absolutely. in here because he has some freaking I would stories. Love, Tasha I want Joe. people to tell their stories. Yeah. That's the whole point of this yeah. podcast. Yeah. yeah, and he has some unreal military stuff that he's he could share in his life and PTSD and that whole thing. Yeah. So, um, so I wanted to go. I was like, my brother's over there. I'm gonna go over there. So I went recruiter, did that whole thing, and then before I left for boot camp or before I was gonna leave for boot camp. My aunt and uncle were like, hey, just come down here for two weeks before you go. I was like, all right, cool. And then I got down there and all they did the whole time I was down there was trying to talk me out of not joining. Really? Because we were at war big time. This was okay. like post 9-11, 2006, got like it. 2007. Like shit was popping off over there and people were dying a yeah. lot. And my aunt and uncle were like, please don't go over there. Please don't go over there. Please don't go over there. I was like, my brother's over there. I want to go over there. Anyway. I ended up having a surgery on my foot, and so it got postponed like a couple months Okay. while I was down there, and then I ended up not going. Oh, I ended up staying okay. down there, so I got a job at a car wash called Cobblestone Auto Spa, and I was making like 60 racks a year at 19 years old or 20 wow. years old or whatever it was, and that was, so, that was more money than I had ever known mm -hmm. in my life. Yeah. I was like, 
I was getting paid every Friday. I'm getting a thousand dollars a week or whatever it is. And yeah. I'm just like, what am I going to do with all this money? Well, guess what? There was a lot of drugs at that mm-hmm. car wash, right? Mm-hmm. So me, I'm just like, I had in my managers. Okay. If they hear this at some point, I'm so sorry. You guys, <laughs> That's is, okay. But you guys are, this is just <laughs> truth. Yeah. So it's um, your story. One of the assistant managers, I won't drop names, but uh, he, he was like a drug dealer and a manager and he would show up with just eggs full of freaking Norcos, right? Norcos? Yeah, Vicodin. So they're oh, like, Vicodin. Okay. Yeah, they're like yellow Vicodin. Got it. 10 milligram Vicodin. Okay. With like no Tylenol in them, I gotcha. don't think, or very just little. Straight, yeah. Yep. Okay. And he's like, hey, you want some? You want a couple of these? And I'm just like, what are they? You know, sure, I'll have a couple. It makes the day go by faster. And then all of a sudden my sale is just like tripled. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> they gave me those Vicodin, and I was selling car washes like it was going out of business. <laughs> and um, and I remember I remember, eventually he like, hey, bro, you got to start paying for this shit, you know? I'm yeah. Like, All right. Well, you know, you, a couple months goes by, and now I'm dropping five, $600 a week. Yeah. A week, Tasha. Pills are not. Oh, I know. I used to take Percocets, 30 Percocets. Yeah. They were like 40 bucks a pill, and- I was popping them, you know, daily, and my ex-husband was popping them, and then two of us together, and yeah, it was definitely, I know it, yeah. They're expensive. Yeah. They're expensive, regardless where you're at, and down there, they were, like, they were even cheaper down there, but I was I was spending so much. Mm-hmm. I was spending, like, 70% of my paycheck every week yeah. on pills. And finally... I move in with Adam and Trevor and Brandon. Brandon moves down and and I'm still doing them at this point. Nobody yeah. knows. Okay. Nobody knows that I'm okay. doing that I'm doing pills. Yeah. And uh and we move into this beautiful house in Scottsdale. It's got a swimming pool. It's like 2500 square feet. And we're just living the dream, right? But freaking Austin's over here just snorting freaking oh Vicodin <laughs> and Oxycontin <laughs> like it's going out of business. Yeah. You know, but nobody knows, mm-hmm. right? And Finally, one day it was my twenty-first birthday, and I remember. And do you do you know? Do you remember Nick Haynes? Nick Haynes. Nick Haynes. So he hung Sounds out. Amazing. He was kind of like you remember Brian Foley. Yeah. Shout yeah. out Brian Foley. That's oh, yeah. my my. I just my... saw Brian Foley because Tanner Tennyson and yeah. All yeah. Them. Well, yeah. Brian was at the fight. Oh Nick, yes, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and uh, Brian is Layla, my oldest. That's his god. That's her godfather. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. he was there at the hospital when she was born. Wow. Okay. And so, um, yeah, so I'm I'm doing all these pills, Tasha. Yeah. And it's getting crazy. And I'm just, I know, I didn't know what withdrawals were. Mm-hmm. I had no clue. Mm-hmm. No clue. You're just taking this pill just every day it. and then, yeah. One day, my 21st birthday, me and Nick go out, Nick Haynes, not my brother, but yeah. me and Nick Haynes go out and we were out in Scottsdale and it's, tw- it's my 21st birthday. So what do we do, we go to the strip club. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> it was Friday. Yeah. It happened to be Friday. I happened to get paid like, and it was like one of my biggest paychecks. It was like sixteen hundred dollars. Okay. Right? Yeah. And I would talk my friends and like I got Nick a job there, my buddy Ashton a job there, and I would just sell them their car washes for them. Yeah. Like I was so hopped up on pills, I was making money for me and for them, and they would come in and work, and I would just sell all their shit, sell my shit, and then everybody would just make a bunch of money. Yeah. And. uh so we end up, me and Nick end up going to the strip club, and oh, I had never been to a strip club bef- before, and I was just like in love immediately. <laughs> 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 oh my uh, goodness, Tasha Joe, you were in love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with a stripper, and it's just <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> and I just remember like thinking at the time, I'm like. This girl loves me. She's in love with me. I'm in love with her. We're... Oh, you actually are serious. Like you met somebody there. Kind of, but not really. Okay. But okay. not really. Like they're just yeah. doing their job. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm 21. Yeah. And so I'm, you're just, thinking... I'm thinking this girl <laughs> loves me. Yeah. Right. I'm like, okay, this girl loves me. She just me. wants your money. <laughs> she wants, and she got it. Yeah. All oh, it, I bet. <laughs> right. So we. There and... goes that $1,600 oh, paycheck. All of it. <laughs> oh, my God. The whole thing was gone in a wow. night, Tasha. It wow. was so bad. Yeah. And so we catch a cab home. I leave my phone in the cab, right? I go back to the house. I have no money. I have no phone and I have no drugs. The 
the withdrawals mm. were about to start and I had no clue yeah. about it. And I remember just going, and I didn't show up to work. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> no call, no show. Yeah. And my boss is just like, hey man, why don't you just take a week off? I was like, okay. And I remember like being fine for the first day and day two rolls around. And I'm just like, mm. I do not feel good. Mm -hmm. The anxiety starts, the sweat starts, yep. I start throwing up, the whole thing, everything. Yeah. And I'm just going, what the frick is going on? I've never felt like this in yeah. my life. I'm 21 years old. Why do I feel like this? I thought I was getting sick, like yeah. coming down with something. I went to the doctor. The doctor's like, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I think you're just getting sick. I'm going to yeah. prescribe you some antibiotics just to make sure and this and that. Day three rolls around and I'm like, what the frick is yeah. going on? I want to die, mm -hmm. right? Because I was doing a lot. Yeah. I mean, I must have been doing like. Doing a lot and then nothing. Yeah. I was yeah. doing like seven, eight, eighties a day. Wow. And I was taking, I was doing a lot. Yeah. But I didn't know. Yeah. I yeah. did not know that the, that there was like withdrawals mm -hmm. and that whole thing. I didn't even know about addiction at the time. Yeah. Like I didn't even You're think I was addicted. You're just a baby. You're 21. Yeah. Yeah. I had no clue. And, and down there it was just us. So it wasn't like there was this culture of addiction going on around me. It was just me. And I was just like, I need the energy. I want the energy. See, and a lot of people with like pain pills and whatnot, they would get like, oh, tired or want to lay down where it gave me energy exactly. when I took Percocets. I'd be cleaning and yep. yeah. Exactly mm -hmm. the same for me. Yeah. Exactly. It had the opposite effect for me. It yep. gave me massive amounts yep. of energy. Yeah. And I would. And you just feel good. I was like, oh, I'm 180% better than I normally am. Yeah. Yep. Meanwhile, my body's just like, F you, bro. Mm -hmm. Like time to chill out. And so. I remember like day three or four, I'm like going through withdrawals and I, and I went and told Brandon, Brown. Brandon, yeah, Brandon, mm -hmm. Brandon was there and he's like, Hey man, like what's going on, bro? Like you've been up in your bed for two and a half days straight. You haven't yeah. left. And I'm like, sleeping it off. And... I'm like, I don't know, man, but here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty sure that like I'm addicted to opiates. Yeah. And, and I, cause I was doing some research. I was trying to figure out what the fuck yeah. is going on. Yeah. And he's like, um, he's like, what? What do you mean? And I'm like, and I explained to him everything that's going on. He's like, okay. He's like, okay. He's like, I'm going to go tell Adam and I'm going to tell him he needs to. And at the time I actually like owed one of the dealers that I was buying from like $1,200 or oh, okay. something like that. Yeah. And I didn't go to work. And so I didn't have money coming in and I told Adam and he's like, all right, how much do you owe? And I was like, I think I owe this much. And so he went to the bank and he, at that time he owned a business with my uncle was a flooring yeah. business. So my, my brother was kind of balling out of control a little bit. He was so, able to help you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he just went and pulled the money out and he's like, we got to go pay this guy. So you, you don't have to worry about that. And then I got clean and finally Brandon was like, Hey dude, I think I'm going to move back home. He's like, you should probably come with me. Mm. You know, and Brandon yeah. was my best friend. Yeah. So I, I mm -hmm. lived with him in high school and he's like, you should probably come with me. I'm like, okay, that sounds good. Let's get out of here. Yeah. So we drive back in a 1994 Honda Civic with no air conditioning through Arizona. Oh my God, hot. Through California. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> and back up to Washington. Oh. Our air conditioning, Tasha Joe, was roll the windows all the way up. Yeah. Yeah. Sweat until you can't sweat anymore. Oh and then God. roll the windows down. Wow. And now you have air conditioning. Yeah. For about 30 seconds. Dang. So we made our way back up and then maybe within like... A month or two, I met a gal. Okay. I met a nice, pretty little <laughs> gal. And here's where Brian Foley comes in the picture. I had a okay. Brian Foley, and uh, he's like, him and I are, uh, we knew each other, and so I was just, we started hanging out, and he's like, hey, we're going to go hang out with these females, and blah, 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 blah. And then I met Olympia, short, or uh, her, everybody called her Pia. Okay. But it was short for Olympia. Okay. I do remember that name, Pia. Yeah. And Is that baby mama, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, okay. That's okay. Layla's mom. Okay. And so we dated for about three days. <laughs> three days? Oh, no. <laughs> and then she was pregnant. Whoa, that yeah. happened quick. Yeah. Okay. But there was, there may or may not have been allegedly some um, uh, outside uh, substances involved. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but I mean, would I take it back? Absolutely. Not, yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, and so, but the thing is, is with, so we, we literally knew each other for like two weeks and then she was pregnant. Wow. 
but we just dealt with it and worked through it yeah. and, and fought and fought not against each other yeah. but we fought for each other yeah right and for because we knew we were about to have a kid and she already had one son named malachi and malachi is half samoan his dad is named fiori who's a oh, cool. stallion okay. by the way okay Looks like the rock. I'm just oh, like, you wow. son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Right. You're so handsome, yeah. dude. <laughs> you know, and he he lived on Bainbridge and him and I always got along. Okay. And his son's a stud now. He's like 6'5", like 240, just jacked. He's 17, 17 years old. Wow. I was like, how are you even human, dude? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so Pia gets pregnant. I'm working the luxurious job of KFC, Taco Bell, and Paul's Bell. Oh, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm a food expediter. No yeah. big deal. Yeah. Making the big bucks. <laughs> and uh, and so I I get a call. And so this is kind of important. So Pia was having, uh, she would have been a high-risk pregnancy because she had Malachi, right? Malachi, I think, was seven at the time when she, maybe five, five or seven, something like that. And she gets pregnant. And she finds out that she has this uh, very, very rare disease that is, it only comes into play with uh, pregnancy. Okay. Specifically childbirth. Oh, wow. So when, pre when, when she gets pregnant, she had Malachi and she lost 20% of her kidney function. So the disease is called collapsing glomerulopathy. And you guys can Google this stuff and check it out how rare it is. It's very rare. It was so okay. rare that they had doctors flying in from Germany, Japan, Europe, wow. all over Europe. They were flying into UW to see Pia because of how rare this thing was. Yeah. They were like, we got to get in there and see what's going on because there's very few cases of it. Maybe more so nowadays. Yeah. But, uh, you know, 13 years ago, not so much. Yeah. And so... We, she was at UW because we kept going to the doctor around here. And the doctor's like, we don't know what to tell you. But she, meanwhile, she's got edema. Her ankles are freaking swollen twice the mm. size of normal. She's got water weight like crazy. She's throwing up all day, every day. It was a nightmare. And I'm just going, what? What is going on? Yeah. You know, like, how do we freaking, how do we deal with this? And, yeah. and I'm 22 or 23 at the time. Young. And I'm just going, what the frick is this life that we're living? Yeah. Meanwhile, Pia's freaking barely hanging on, right? She goes over to uh, UW. They s finally, the doctor goes, hey, you should probably go over there. And so I'll write you a, a referral. You're going to go over there. So she goes over there. She starts going over there for appointments because she's now high-risk pregnancy. Okay. She starts going over there for appointments, and she says, I'm going to be over here for a while. They want me to stay here, right? And so... And where is this at? University of Washington okay. Medical Center. Okay. And so, um, and so, like, I'm bouncing back and forth. And then I get a call from her dad one night who, shout out to her dad, because he was, her parents adopted her. Okay. She's adopted. And Bill McGlino, shout out Bill and Sue McGlino. Uh, those parents are freaking awesome. They were awesome. You know, yeah. you have so... I have so much more respect for parents being older. Yeah. Like things that I thought back then versus what I do now. And I look at Absolutely. all the people who influenced me in my life and I'm going, these freaking parents were savages. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The things that they did for us back then. And I'm, I'm looking back on it going, how did, they, how were they able to do that? Oh, I think all the time, how the hell did my parents put up with me? I <laughs> fucking gave, a, well, gave them a run for their money. For, for sure. sure. Well, you and everybody else in our school. Yeah. Everybody knew you and everybody yeah. knew your parents. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And everybody's yeah. like, dude, Tasha's, Tasha and Tiffany's <laughs> parents are the coolest. They're so awesome. Right? Every time. And they're time. the best of friends. They've been divorced for 20 years now. And we do all of our holidays together, family functions. Mm. Like, they're the best of friends. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember going, like. These freaking people are legit. <laughs> They're awesome. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I get a call from uh, Pia's dad and he goes, Hey man, you should probably get over here. It looks like, we, you know, baby might be coming. I'm like, what do you mean? Baby might be coming. We're freaking four. We're five months in. We got three months to go. Damn. Pops. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? We're going to have a baby. We yeah. got three more months to go. And he goes, yeah, things aren't looking good right now. You should get over here like right now. Like you need Yikes. to walk out of your job at Taco Bell <laughs> <laughs> and hop on the ferry and get over here and I'll pick you up because it's getting real serious. And I'm going, okay, I'm on my way. Yeah. And I get over there and I get a CPA and she's such a 
she was, she passed away. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, she passed away. And so she, she was such a freaking warrior. Like that woman was so tough, tougher than any woman I've ever known in my life. Wow. Layla's mom was the toughest girl I have ever met because of what I watched her go yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. What she battled with. Yeah. And, um, and I have a post on Facebook and I want to read it before we get off. Yeah, absolutely. It was a Mother's Day post that I, that I posted and I wrote and, and I'll read it be, at the end of this story. I'll, okay. I'll pull it out and I'll read it. Okay. Um, or maybe if you want to read it, you could pull it. Or Either. you don't do Facebook. I have Facebook. I'm just barely on it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I get over there and boom, within like an hour of me being there, Brian Foley and Mary Foley, who are married and have been married and have two kids, beautiful kids, still my best friend to this day and is Layla's godfather. Boom, they're there. They're there. And I'm like, how did you guys get here so fast? Well, it happened to be that Brian had just like, I don't know if he had graduated from UW that year. Yeah. Cause, or he had some sort of meeting, but he had either just graduated or was about to graduate. So they're there to support me. Pia's parents are there and we're all in this and you dub shout out to you dub medical center because they were ridiculously on point there. Yeah. And there we're probably in a room like maybe two or three times the size in the room that we're in you guys right now. It's a big room. Yeah. Like this is mm -hmm. not a small room. It's got yeah. vaulted ceilings. Like <laughs> it's big. Like, but at UW, they had the, the whole deal there. Like it was re really, really nice. And, um, and I remember just going, walking in, there's a couple of TV screens, there's monitors everywhere. There's doctors in and out the whole time. Yeah. And I go, okay, so can somebody tell me like what's going on? They gave me the rundown. And then as one of the doctors talking to me, boom, Pia's vitals drop deadline. Beep, 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 beep. Right. So. 20 doctors rushing, mm -hmm. right? They cart her out. And as they're carting her out, they go, hey, one person can come, dad or mom. And I looked at Sue, her mom, and yeah. I go, Sue, you got to go. I can't yeah. go in there. Yeah. I'm not going to know what to say. I'm not going to know what to do. Yeah. I said, you got to go in there. She's going to want you in there. Yeah. She goes, okay, I'm going. And so she went in there. 45 minutes later, they on a lunch cart, a metal steel lunch cart, they cart my daughter out, Layla, oh. at a pound and a half, wow. Tasha. She was born at a pound and a half. And they cart her out on a little steel cart that you would see at like a junior high lunch, lunch, like lunch lady pushing along. And they, they bring her out and she just looks at me. She just goes, meh. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks over at me and then she just puts her head back down and then they keep pushing her right along. And that was that. And there's Layla Odetta Marie McGlino Collins. Quite the name. Yeah. But she was, she's 13 now. And that's the one I was telling you about earlier. She's yeah. very, very wise and mature and put together for her age. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the spirit of her mom in her just like, you know, just saying, hey, I live this wild, crazy life. I don't want that for you. I want something else for you. And I think there's something about that that sits within her that is like, She's kind of just like, she's, she knows that like, she doesn't know my background. Yeah. I think she's, she's picked up some pieces oh, along yeah, the way. Oh yeah, I'm sure. You know? And so, um, and by the way, Pia and I did many, many drugs together. Yeah. We had, How did Pia pass? So that uh, kidney disease that I was telling you mm. about, after she had Layla, she lost her kidney function completely. Mm. Completely. Because the doctor said, hey, before we went to, no, when we got to UW, the doctor's like, hey. Check it out. If you move forward yeah. Yeah. with this pregnancy, there's a very, very good chance that you're going to lose your kidney function. It could be 20 more percent. So you could be down to 60. It could be, you could be down to 40 or you could lose all of it. We don't know. We don't know enough yeah. about the disease that you have, Yeah. but we know that it's going to affect it major. Mm. Well, she lost all of it. They end up pulling her kidneys out, all sorts of stuff. And then five years after Layla was born, fighting this thing, dialysis for five years, wow. just pain medication, fentanyl yeah. patches, the whole shit. Yeah. And then she ended up passing away. And wow. so, but you know what? She, back to the wrestling thing, but this is wrestling with life, you guys. And listen to this. This is the most brave woman I've ever known because she said, the doctor said to her, she said, or he said, if you have this kid, 
there's there's more of a chance that you're going to die than survive. She looked right at that doctor, and I was there for it. She so looked I'm right at that doctor, baby. and she said, I am not giving this baby up. Oh. And she knew that she could have possibly died, you know, and she did yeah. eventually. She paid the price for it, yeah. but guess what? Here we are today yeah. with a beautiful 13-year-old girl, girl who's smart as ever because one woman stood up and didn't give up yeah. and believed oh, in beautiful. life. She yeah. believed in life, and... And she believed in the life of her daughter. She believed in the life of her son. She believed in my life. And mm -hmm. and I always, Tasha, I look back and sometimes I get sad because I think about it. I'm like, you know, I look at the things that I have today yeah. and the money and the truck and the yeah. and the women, meaning like yeah. my wife, old ex, I don't <laughs> know. We can talk about that later. Yeah. But yeah. And I'm looking at like the things that I didn't, that I have now that I didn't have while Pia was alive. And I go, I just wish. I look back and not that I regret anything, but I wish I could have allowed her to have that even for a day. Yeah. Even for a day, just have a life without the kidney disease, with functioning kidneys, with being able to go to Maui, with being able to see her daughter in school or see her daughter but in a But as play. you know, everything happens for a for reason sure. and it's all divine timing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, some... You you're you know you go to bed at night you lay in yeah. bed and sometimes thoughts kind of take over your head oh, and things all come the time in, yeah things come into your head and you just go man you she can't go down that road of if I would have done this or if this or yeah I know. you can't yeah it's yeah. it's it'll it'll get you mm -hmm. and it has gotten me many times because I think about it and I'm just like I just wish I could have allowed there could have been something where she could have experienced the goodness of life and it's in its wholeness. Yeah. And she never really got that. And yeah. so that's something that I have battled with, you know, that's a guilt thing that I've battled mm -hmm. with is going, I was a, I felt very, very kind of piece of crappy back then. Yeah. And now I kind of have like all my poop in one pile, yeah. as we like yeah. to say. Yeah. And, um, and so I kind of just like, can I just get her for one day just to bring her back and show her, Hey, thank you because you believed in us. You gave your life for your daughter and you put up with the crap and look where we're at now. Yeah. Here we are. And I think that's the biggest thing too. I mean, I remember when I lost my brother and I don't even know if you know about that. I do, but only because we talked about it briefly at okay. the fights. Yeah. So he would call me all the time and I'm just going to make this quick because I want to get back to your story. Yeah. But, um, you know, he would call me all the time inventing and stuff and Sure. After he passed, you know, there were plenty of times where I'd be like, oh, if I would have just called him back or, you know, because the week that he passed and I've never even talked about this on air before, but he that was like one of the busiest weeks for me. And he was blowing me up, probably texting me like 10 times a day, every day. And I didn't respond. You know, so <laughs> that guilt of, oh, if I would have. But I've I had been down that road with my brother and like the recent grief episode I did with my mom, which, oh my God, it was such a beautiful episode. Wait, you did a podcast with your mom? In yeah. Here? You're going to have to uh, listen to it. It was I all on grief sure. and her story on how oh she was gosh. like, it was like Godzilla was on my chest and I couldn't breathe. And wow. you know, a lot of people aren't, don't know grief until you experience it, but she talks about the different levels and you know, like if I would have picked up the phone, if I would have this and you know, we can torture ourselves and go down that road, but you can't like everything is orchestrated as it should be, you yeah. know? Yeah. So it's all part of our journey. Yeah, it's crazy. I didn't yeah. know I had a podcast with your mom. Oh, Definitely. yeah, you're going to have to listen oh, to it. It was really good. It was like Heck three, yeah. I think it was like 22 or 23. I'll send it to you. Heck yeah. yeah. Right on. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so, gosh, I know this is long. I hope I'm not taking too much no, time. No, no, no. to get good. to the, I'm trying to get to some crazy. And like I said, even if we have to break this up into like two parts, we can do that. But like okay. that's my whole mission with this podcast is, I want people to come on here and share their stories, especially yeah. people who have been through the toughest, the darkest, you know, like I am here to just bring that awareness to people like you're not alone. If you are going through these things, it helps listeners know they're not alone and yeah. to, you know, give yeah. them hope. And, and that's so. so huge. That's yeah. so huge when you hear that. It's like Your mess is your message. I am a firm believer in that. I heard it from a Tony Robbins event yeah. one well, time. Well, you should put that on the wall. I here. know, right? I need to get on that. Right up there <laughs> your somewhere. Mess your, is mess your mess is your message. <laughs> Boom, right across yeah. there with, 
I see neon you. light. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be perfect. Yeah. You know, inhale, exhale. And I'm, I'm looking at All that the sign M's. There. Mystic, movement, yeah, mess, you message. Come on. You got it, Tasha Joe. You know what's <laughs> oh, up. You got it going on in here. Thank it's you. It's awesome. It it's really a vibe, is. right? It's so good. Anybody who comes back, because I'm all, okay, that's the one thing. We'll get back to you. But lighting, I'm sorry, but like I love interior design and whatnot, but lighting is huge. You're great at it. Thank you. You really I are. Am a, I love dimmers. I have installed dimmers on like all my <laughs> lights throughout the shop, uh-huh. my home. I want to like go to start like a business for men, you know, single men. I'm like, hey, if you, you just fixed crush. your lighting, you put a crush. couple plants and some candles, oh I got you, bro. <laughs> you would freaking murder. Right? <laughs> murder <laughs> i know okay back to you okay though, before okay. we get sidetracked so we got layla we got pia she yep. ends up passing away layla's five years old so here's where i'll go with that is so when when before right before pia died her and i were like dabbling in drugs okay nothing crazy and then what was it kind of brought us into it kind of brought us into it and then i went deep and she kind of like still like hung on you know okay. still around obviously and i'm right? dying to know how it got into the homeless part in that journey but i'll let you well, go it ahead, happened Hugo. like three times okay okay it happened like three times and so um the first time would have been so i i went through drug court okay. i don't know if you've heard of drug court uh-uh. before basically it's like where if you have felonies Okay. And the judge is about to hit you with felonies like, hey, dude, you got drug charges, you got theft charges, you got all these charges for crimes that you have committed against humanity. Mm. And But here's what we're going to do. We're going to give okay. you a second chance. If you complete this rigorous, and back then it was, now it's not so much, it's a little bit sissy now. Okay. But back Back then it was Judge Roof, and he freaking had the gavel. And that fool wouldn't was not freaking. He wasn't a fool. Excuse me, Judge Roof. Yeah. Please, if you if you ever hear this, I'm sorry. I love you. And I actually saw Judge Roof, uh, like maybe three and a half months ago at a okay. restaurant. So it was super cool. Oh my god. And uh, but Judge Roof would freaking lay the smack down. So basically, what drug court is is if let's and I'll just tell you for, for me and then I'll get I'll I'll rewind and then I'll bring it all okay. the way back through okay. so but what drug court is is I had three felony charges trafficking and then I had some stolen property okay and so I had three felony charges and so I show up to court and they say hey you did some stupid shit but we have this program called drug court and what it is is we recognize that you would not have done those crimes if you were not completely and totally engulfed in drugs Mm -hmm. so what we want to do is we want to get rid of those felonies that are going to curse the rest of your life and but in order to do that you have to uh go through this rigorous uh program where it's basically it's a government program where you are going to like at first you go to Five a or it's actually it's every day. You go to you have to go to an AA or an NA meeting every day. Okay. And then you have to have them sign a piece of paper every day. Every day. Wow. That says that you went to that meeting. Okay. Right. And then you have like you have group sessions, right, where everybody gets together and and there's a counselor and that whole thing. And there's usually like there's a bunch of different counselors, but within a group, it's usually like ten to twenty people. Okay. In a counselor. Our counselor was Judy Patton, and she was the bomb. <laughs> she was probably 60 years old. She was like an old school, like original drug dealer, but motorcycle badass okay. who who went to the light side and yeah. started telling people how to get out of doing drugs. Awesome. And so she didn't pull any punches. She was always straight up. Yeah. You couldn't bullshit her. But she always had like the perfect thing to say and she knew how to get out of a certain situation in life oh you're dealing with this in your life you're dealing with this in your life you're doing she's like i've been through all that shit i'm 60 years old i used to freaking ride with the hell's angels back in southern california all that kind of stuff yeah so she had a solution for everything yeah and then she had a freaking bachelor's degree in uh 
chemical dependency. Okay. So she was able to take her life experience and her uh, education, put them together, and then tie it up into a bow and serve it to you. Wow. Three days a week. Yeah. That's what we got from Judy. Yeah. And uh, and I, it went from me not liking it to like by the time I was done at drug court, like I was crying because I didn't want to go. Yeah. I did not want to go because I had become so attached to this woman, so attached to the group, so attached to the idea of family. And that's plays a huge role part in my life because my family has been so broken up yeah so growing up I was adopted at five by my mom's second husband her first husband died and then there was complications there with her second husband because he was I don't I won't I, we'll talk off camera yeah. about that but there was uh or uh podcast about that yeah. but there was some uh things that had happened some abuse and some things and we had left me and my brother had moved out multiple times in the okay. course of from seventh grade to graduation we had lived with our aunt and uncle i lived with brandon brown and his family I remember and, all that yeah and we'll get into that in the next podcast because gosh i got so many i stories. know no this I is exciting so though many. and so um so drug court i I'm a cab driver in drug court. I have. Do you want to hear cab driver stories? Yeah. Or no. I mean, it, it's up to you. You have a whole story, so kind of okay. Pick and I'll, choose. I'll be. I'll be quick. So I got a gang of cab driver stories. Okay. Because I was. I. I. Dro I drove for a uh, Royal Taxi, and Royal Taxi is a local. It was a local cab, uh, company, and so that was kind of. It was the perfect job. Yeah. For drug court because I had classes and AA meetings and court every single Friday. Every Friday, go to Port Orchard, sit in front of a superior court judge and tell wow. them how you're doing. And then on top of that, you're peeing in a cup three days a week, just four days a week randomly. You had to call every single morning. Yeah. You had to call to make sure that you had a color. My color, you had three phases, first, second, third phase. First phase is right when you get into drug court. Yeah. And that's usually... uh. I think it was red and green. And then it went, oh no, it was blue or red. And then like, I remember phase three was brown and, oh, so, okay. First phase was gold and one other color. And then second phase was red and blue. And third phase was brown and like purple. Okay. Right. So every day you would call a number and it would say, thank you for calling the drug court P line. <laughs> <laughs> the colors today are red and blue. And so if you're red and blue, you had to go down to oh. Kitsap, uh, whatever the recover Kitsap recovery center. And mm -hmm. you had to go stand there while a guy watched you pee in a cup. Wow. And that was for the first six months. That was like every other day. And then it became like every three days. And then phase three would be like, <coughs> excuse me, once a week. Mm -hmm. And so the farther along you got, the less you had to pee, the more rapport you built up, the more you were working, the less that yeah. you were doing groups and, and so on and so forth. And you graduate, everybody's crying, you know, because you've become, you went from this person who was completely and totally hooked on drugs and usually in jail to somebody who is a sustaining, providing um, part of society yeah. that now has a purpose in life. And so I'm forever thankful. Anybody who has listened to this podcast or is going to because Tasha Joe, <laughs> this podcast is going to be something different. Oh, yeah. Eventually, you're going to have millions of listeners. Right? Oh, yeah. We're that's the that, plan. We're that's putting that plan. out to the yes. universe right now. And I, I know it's going to happen because what I'm looking at and what I've seen here in the short amount of time that you have done what you have done um, is amazing. And Thank I think you. this podcast is going to be a reflection of that thank you and the ratings are climbing i remember like i would get on daily and it would be like ooh, five new listeners and now i get on it's like 40 new listeners a day and like it just keeps climbing and climbing and from all around the world that's what i love about looking at the stats you can see where people are listening in the world that's and really cool. yeah i just want it to reach people i've always said if my podcast reaches one person and changes their life, I'm grateful and, you know, mission yeah. accomplished. Yeah. yeah. Well, it reached me today when I was listening to yours because I was like, shoot, Tasha <laughs> Joe, dang, okay. And I'm a podcaster, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't do podcasts, but I listen to them yeah. avidly almost every day. Joe Rogan For, fan, right? Big here. Joe Rogan yeah. fan. I'm a, <laughs> I listen to everything from 
uh, astrology. Oh, what? Okay, now you're speaking I'm ta- my language. I'm talking, and my dad, by the way, is a big astrologer. Oh, I should have. I was sitting right by you him, and we were shooting on, the shit. Like, I you should have brought him up astrology. On, you yes, would love absolutely. having my dad on. My dad would go nuts up in here. I could talk astrology all <laughs> night long. Well, he knows like, his I shit. He's like no bullshitter. Like, he knows his shit. In fact, me and Nick got him a uh, really, really nice telescope that all he has to do is type in some coordinates, and it'll, so cool. and it'll go right so to wherever badass. he wants in the sky. For his, I think it was like his retirement party because he's retired. That's so cool. My dad was super into astrology too. He only has one tattoo and it's astrology, like his placements. And here I'm super into astrology. And so that's something that we're able to talk about now too. Yeah, it's really cool. And same thing with my dad is like he has no tattoos. Yeah. And here me and all his boys have massive amounts of tattoos. Yeah, yeah. And so we were in Hawaii this last, maybe three weeks ago, we were in Kihei in Maui and... uh. And I'm like, Pops, I'm looking at him. I'm like, what's up with a tattoo while you're here? And he's like, oh, no, I'm not getting a tattoo. Blah, 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 blah. And I look at him. I'm like, all right, you're 60 something years old. Yeah. If you don't have a tattoo by your 70, your 70th birthday, I said, will you get a tattoo with all of your boys? Oh, I love that. Matching. And he said, if I, he goes, fine. He agreed. He said, on my 70th birthday, I'll go down with all my boys, and he's got a lot of us, mm. and we'll all go get the same exact tattoo. So my dad agreed to that, and it's probably going to be like- My dad's birthday is like in two weeks. That just inspired me where Dan, my ex-boyfriend, which yeah. Dan, you will be coming on a podcast <laughs> soon. Come on, Dan. Bring Come it. on, Dan. But I want to tell my dad, like, hey, dad, let's get matching. I would love to have a matching tattoo with my dad. Right? I think like, that would be what, awesome. What else links you together for yeah. life than ink oh, yeah. in your that skin just totally that you can never me. erase? He's doing it. I'm just going to be like, dad, want to go to lunch? <laughs> What's your dad's name again? Mike. Mike, that's right. Mike, yeah. Mike, you better get down Mikey. here. <laughs> better get down here, Mikey, and get a matching tattoo He's going to. He's not going to know about it. I'm just going to be like, hey, dad, can we spend the day together? And I'm going to show up to Dan's, and then I'm going to be like, guess what, dad? <laughs> <laughs> tattoo time. Tattoo get time. Get ready for it. <laughs> So yeah, drug court and uh, finished drug court, graduated. I had one, what they call, uh, what's what do they call it? Sanction. They call them sanctions. Okay. They're f ups when you okay. f up when somebody uses or they don't show up to a group yeah. or whatever it may be, and then it's called a sanction. You get in trouble, and then you go to jail. Mm. So if you mess up in drug court, it's not like, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not a slap on the wrist. Okay, it's, it's you're going to jail. Wow. And I was in drug court for like three months and I get into group and Judy goes, all right, UA results are back. And she looks over at me and she goes, Mr. Collins, <laughs> <laughs> you got a low creatinine. And I'm like, sweet. What, what <laughs> prize do I win? Yeah. Because I was driving taxi at the time and, uh, a low creatinine level, basically what it is, is creatinine is how much it's your body's way of measuring how much protein gets filtered through your kidneys. Mm. Okay. And so with today's science, basically, if you are somebody who is trying to flush drugs out of your system, your creatinine level will be extremely low. Got it. And so for drug court, the cutoff level is a 20. So if you're below a a 50 or a 20, I can't remember what it was. I think it's a 50. If you're below a 50, then you're going to jail. Yeah. And I was at like a... 38 or something like that for it was just below the cutoff line and i didn't get i didn't use drugs but i was drinking red bull and mm-hmm. like i'm a cab driver and i yeah. work at night so i'm just pounding red bulls <coughs> excuse me gosh dang that's okay <laughs> so when i uh i'm gonna take a drink hold on you're good we're so just when, chilling. We are chilling. And this is really nice. I kind of don't ever want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so a vibe for sure. It is, <laughs> most definitely. And so we're, when I first get into drug court, Judy, my counselor, she goes, hey, if you're not using drugs, you don't have to worry about low creatinine. It rarely happens. You don't have to worry about yeah. it. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I get one and I'm super upset, right? I'm like, Judy, this is bullshit. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I didn't get high. And she goes, I, she goes, I believe you because at the, at that point in time I was working out a lot. Like I'm, I'm in my bag. Right. Yeah. And, and so I went to jail for the weekend (laughs) (laughs) and uh, it was not fun. It was so frustrating, but I got out and I was just like, Oh my gosh, I'm so thankful to be out of jail because there have been multiple times in my life. I had spent 20 days, 30 days, 40 days and 50 days in jail. Right. 
So I'll rewind a little bit. Okay. But I wanted to give you an idea of drug court. Yeah. So before drug court, Layla's mom and I, um, we had dabbled in drug use. And, um, you know, when you're in your early 20s, you don't know the repercussions. You don't understand Mm -hmm. the depth or the decisions that you're making. What is about to take place Yeah. because of the decisions that you're making. And some people can do drugs and, and then just take a step back and then move forward in their lives. A lot of kids in college do that and then yeah, they graduate and they sure. go on to live great lives and then they never do drugs again. Yeah. That was not me, Tasha okay. Joe. <laughs> that was not you. That was not me. And I'm feeling like this episode because yeah, we are coming up on like over an hour. This is like the story of Austin's journey. And then I think part two needs to be your homeless journey. Yes. Does that sound good? That sounds so, great. Okay. Yeah. And that then we can great. follow okay, up. So we'll wrap up here. No, I'm no, I'm not even saying right. Well, I mean, eventually, because nobody wants to listen to a two hour podcast, but I listen to three and a half hour podcast. No, I'm all for that. (laughs) No, I'm just saying even if we record back to back to back, but I'm just saying this one and then you'll have to tune into the next episode for your homeless journey episode. Yeah, because there's like three of them. Yeah. Okay. perfect. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So you don't understand the 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 repercussions, the gravity at a young age of doing hard drugs, whether it's methamphetamine or heroin or, and it do, I mean, if you find somebody out in the world who says, yeah, just one day I decided to pick up a needle and put it in my arm and put yeah. heroin or methamphetamine. Is that what you were doing? Heroin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was doing heroin, methamphetamine. I was doing all of it. Oh wow! And I was doing it intravenously. Mm. So I was putting needles into my arm and I'll kind of, I'll get to a, a stopping point for tonight yeah. in the next 10 minutes. And then you'll have to listen to the next episode, which will be directly yeah. after this one. So I know all of you listening will definitely want to hear the next journey. Yes. So, okay. Cause yeah. it gets deeper and deeper oh and darker God. and scarier yeah. and better, but that's okay. This it's is a what people want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Tune in for the next episode. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, so prior to drug court, I'm do I'm, uh, Layla's mom and I, uh, Pia, we're, we're kind of dabbling in some different things and, and she kind of stops because we have this child, right? Yeah. And I kind of yeah. keep going. Yeah. Right. And then I get oh. into drug court. And so prior to that, I wasn't doing anything intravenously before drug court, but I was smoking meth and I was smoking heroin and I was doing these things and they didn't start off like that. It starts off with, you know, taking this drug or this drug or this drug. Yeah. And then slowly over the time, you kind of just somersault into the underworld. Yeah. We'll call it. Right. And you start meeting people and then these people and then things become less expensive because you do it this way. And, yeah. you know, you can't afford it at 22 years old, 21 years old, 23 years old, whatever. You can't afford a thousand dollar a week no, drug habit. Yeah. So you got to start doing heroin, which is a hundred dollars a week for the same yeah. amount. Right. So that's kind of where I fell into that. And I'll tell this story and then we can end with that if you yeah. want. But I, um, and then I can backtrack and kind of yep. regain from there. Mm-hmm. But uh, recently, so about seven years ago, it's probably my second homeless journey um, where I was homeless for about a year. And this is bec- obviously because of drug use. Yeah. Right. I had lost this is the second or third time I had lost my house. I had lost my car, my job. And every single time it was like a three month just pitfall. It's like you're walking, you're in life, you're walking, everything's beautiful, right? Things are going yeah. good. You're at the gym, you have a good job, you have your family, you're going to Thanksgiving and Christmas and, and all these things, trick or treating with your kids and life is beautiful. There's flowers everywhere, fireworks going off on the 4th of July. Yeah. And then slowly over time, the reaper comes in. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) That reaper, he doesn't just come in and bust through a wall and say, hey, I'm here. He slowly over time starts to just slide things in front of you Mm -hmm. without you really knowing. And then over the course of one, two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, three months, so on and so forth. And before you know it, you're looking back going, how did I get here? Mm-hmm. Right. And here is I'm sleeping underneath the lion at Noah's Ark on 6th Street. What? 
I have pictures. Oh no, I remember running into your mom. It was years ago. I don't it was when Danny's dad had passed. Yes, Rory. I ran yeah, I ran into your mom Which and is she, a crazy story in itself. Oh yeah, that's a whole nother thing. But I had ran into her because she's good friends with Danny's mom. Yes. And that's my she had auntie. Ju- I said, Oh, how's Austin? And she just told me, I'm like, What? <laughs> and so that's where I'm like when I ran into you at RJ's fine, I'm like, Oh my god, Austin, I want to hear your story and your journey. Yeah. You know, because yeah. Ah. Yeah, and my poor mother, right? <laughs> it's like, how many times has she had to deal with this situation? Too yeah. many. Too many yeah. for any mom, regardless of the circumstance. Are you guys really close now? I had. So we just went through some things, and I won't share that on yeah. here, Yeah. but we can talk about it yeah. later. But um, I had dinner with her last night. Oh, okay. And we were close, and then some things happened, and, and but I did have uh, dinner with her last night, and it went well. So we'll okay. leave it at that. Okay. But yes. My mom it's is, in progress. It is in progress. Good. I think it will be in progress for life. Yeah, that's okay. But it's one of those things for sure. But, but you I, keep but going, like you said exactly. in the beginning. You keep going. Yep. And I will say this. So I love my mother, mom. I love you. <laughs> and uh, oh. my mom. My I love mother, you too. <laughs> my mother is beautiful, and she's strong, yeah. and she has wit, and she has character, and she has drive, and she has what a lot of people that I don't see have which I hope with this podcast yeah. and I think with this podcast, what Tosh is doing is going to deliver that in an applicable way to other people's lives. So Absolutely. they can take what's being said and used here and take apply it resonates. to their lives. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And apply it to their life in a way that makes a difference. Yeah. Right. And my mom is kind of like the cornerstone of that in, <laughs> in our life is where she can make do with whatever. Yeah. So shout out to the mom. Heck you yeah. Know, we was, love you. <laughs> that was one lesson that she always taught me is you got to, if you don't have much, you make do with what you've got. Absolutely. You know? And so, so I'm sleeping underneath the lion at Noah's Ark on okay. 6th Street. Anybody from Bremerton or Kitsap <laughs> County, if you've had a milkshake from Noah's Ark, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when you pull in the parking lot, yeah. you'll see all the zoo animals. There's mm-hmm. a lion laying there, right? There's a reason why I slept underneath okay. that lion. Yeah. And, but among the lion... And the gorilla and the giraffe and all the other animals there. <laughs> <laughs> I slept in many places in yeah. Bremerton and I wasn't just homeless, Tasha. How long like, were you homeless for? Uh, the first time was about two years. Wow. A year and a half, two years on and wow. off. But f- the, the for the majority of it was almost two years. The second time was about nine months. And then there was like a short stint after that where I went in and out quickly. Right. I'll share the last stint. Okay. Or the nine month one. Where okay. So there was two, not three, two. Yeah. So, um, and then I'll, I'll end with, with somewhere that we can stop at. So, yeah. um, and then a, to be continued TBC, <laughs> TBC. <laughs> um, so I was, let's see here. Uh, do you know who Cody Shafe is? No, I don't think so. Tall, handsome, strapping young man. He's married with three kids now. I don't think he so. He lives in Montana, but he worked for UPS. And prior to that, how I met Cody was because he was in drug court with me. Okay. And he is an example of what it's like to get be in the wrong place at the wrong time, but then shine mm. brightly. And yeah. this dude is like six foot five handsome as hell (laughs) and like has his shit together now and never looked back never stumbled again he family man to the core lives in montana has got a farm now like killing the game right get it and yeah that's my boy cody (laughs) shout out mr shafe dude i love you brother shafe yeah he's a a stud (laughs) and uh and so you have guys like that who are able to, you know, bounce back and yeah. then they never look back. I kind of, I went through that a couple times and now I'm at the point now where it's like, okay, I'm not looking back. I'm kind of yeah. past that in my yeah. life and, uh, and I have a lot to show for it. Only going we, forward. Yeah. Which yeah. is awesome. Mm-hmm. But so I had, I was living with Cody, Cody and he wasn't married yet, but his soon to be wife, Kayla lived in Port Orchard and he said, Hey bro, you're doing really good. Um, I think I was living in an Oxford house okay. and he said, Hey, come, come over here. We have an apartment below our house. You can just 500 bucks a month, bro. Come stay here. And I had a one bedroom apartment all to myself in nice. Port Orchard. It was really nice. Yeah. Well, I think I was there for six months and then I started doing drugs again. Mm. And I don't, I don't really remember how I started doing them. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was because of a female. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Yeah. And, uh, 
oh yeah, that's, that is how it goes. I was dating a girl who was a bartender in Paulsville and we'll keep that there just because I don't want to yeah. expose anything. Totally. But this girl that I had been dating and she was a little bit, she was like four or five years older than me. Okay. And she came to my house one day and she told me that she had genital herpes. Oh no. <laughs> Tasha, Joe. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no. no is right. So oh, I'm man. looking at her going, excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. So she tells me that and I'm going, well, when did you find out? She goes, I just found out. I said, bullshit, you're a liar. And in a very, very nice, loving, yeah. warm hearted way, I said, get the F out. And that was that. Okay. And then I immediately went to the doctor and got <laughs> tested. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, no. Thank God I didn't have herpes. Yeah. yeah. So... But it's like, that was, I clearly knew she was lying. Yeah. It's like, you don't, you yeah. like, I, I know a few people that do have it and I've talked to them about it cause I called them immediately and I was yeah. like, Hey bro, check it out. Blah, blah, blah. Or Hey, yeah. you know, so-and-so and, uh, and they're like, you would know. And I yeah. was like, okay, good. And then I went and got tested and I was good. Yeah. So after that happened, I start. I, I know, I don't remember how it happened, but I started doing drugs again. And finally Cody came up to me one day and he's like, Hey bro. We're hearing some weird shit going on downstairs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> We're hearing some weird shit going down. And um, are you just, are you getting high down there? Or what's going on, bro? And I'm like, you know, Cody, I would lie to probably some other people. But I told him, I was like, I'm not going to lie to you, man. Yeah, I've been using and this and that. And he's like, okay. I was like, I don't expect you to let me stay here yeah. if I'm using. You got your brand, you got a boy and one on the way. And I was like, I get it. Just give me like a week and I'll be out of here. And he's like, bet, got it. Yeah. He's like, you got yeah. a week, no problem. And so at the time, I knew a, a guy that was living in Bremerton and he was a drug dealer and I had a bunch of money still and I had the valuables. So I just packed all my shit up and we went over there. Yeah. Flash forward, fast forward, probably maybe three months. I lost my job. I lost mm. my car. I lost everything that I had and I was homeless. Wow. And at that point in time, it had escalated from smoking drugs to doing drugs intravenously. And one day I had moved from, you know, at, so I don't know. Some people may know this, but there's these things called trap houses. Okay. You hear them in rap songs. And they make them sound really cool. They're yeah. not cool, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> trap houses are not cool. There's a reason why they call them trap houses because you go there and then you can't leave because you just do drugs there the whole time. Oh. You're just selling drugs, doing drugs. That's why they call them trap houses because it's a freaking trap, right? You got drug dealers coming and going and then you got the fiends who are there doing the drugs. Yeah. And so I was just trap house to trap house to trap house every day. And the way that I would make money is I would panhandle. Mm. I would just walk up and down Kitsap Way and I would just ask people for money. Hey, yeah. do you have an extra dollar? And I got it down to a science where I was making like $150, $200 a day. Wow. And I knew how to get, I'm a good talker. Yeah. Like I did sales. So I knew how to, yeah. you know, I knew kind of like the mindset of people. And I knew that, hey, there's some rules. And I can't, I even had, like came up with my own rules for panhandling. It was so funny, <laughs> Tasha. I was like, okay, rule number one. Try and make sure that you don't look as homeless as you are, oh <laughs> right? Because who wants to give yeah. money to a guy who is coming up to them wherever they're at, asking them for money, unless it's yeah. somebody who has either a good story, like a, a yeah. quick 10 second s like sell, like, hey, I ran out of gas. <laughs> can, right? you, can you hook me up with some gas money? Yeah. Right? Or it's, hey, do you have another, a, a spare dollar or whatever it is? So people would... So, and then the second rule was never ask people for money when they're going into a store. Mm. Always ask people for money when they're coming out of the store. Because if you ask people for money when they're going into the store, there's a 70% chance they're going to tell the person at the front desk that there's somebody asking for money outside. But if they come out of the store, they're getting into their car and they're leaving. Oh, okay. So I started to learn these yeah. little tricks. And then yeah. like I started making bank. And I'm like, I'm out here making more money than the drug dealers. Oh, my God. And I'm a homeless dude on the street. Right. Yeah. And so that made it even worse because now I'm doing more drugs. I'm getting more people. In and the money you were making were just going right back to drugs. All of it. Yeah. All okay. of it. 
all of it, not yeah. to anything else, yeah. barely food, wow. right? It was all drugs, about 150 to $200 a day, all wow. drugs. Wow. And then one day, and I'll end with this story, and then we can have a part two. Yeah. Um, I People was, are going to be ready for part two. Oh, They're yes. going to want to know how yes. all this. Because <laughs> this story is crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> so um, at this point in time, I'm in real bad shape, right? I'm probably 150 pounds. Um, and it, I'm, it, there's a trap house. Off, there was a trap house off of Kitsap Way. And I knew all the trap houses. And to this day, I still know some of them. I'm like, yep, there's a trap house. Yeah. Bremerton is flooded with drugs. Yeah. And it, and that's we'll get into that in another yeah. podcast. Mm-hmm. The solution behind that. How do we yeah. fix that, you guys? How do we come out here and get Bremerton and Silverdale yes. and Kitsap cleaned up? Because right now, it's a mess. Yeah, It's an absolute Agreed. mess. Because before I came here, I was at 7-Eleven. And I'm seeing 25 homeless people on both sides of the building. And half of them don't have clothes on. The other half are in the store tweaking out. It's just terrible. It's so bad. It's it's horrible. every year for Christmas. I go around and I collect clothes, blankets, robes, anything for I hit up everybody. And last year I went down behind 7-Eleven because yeah. that whole alley down there. Yeah. And then I put together little brown paper bags and I put like dollar bills and Gatorades and snacks. And then, of course, leave it to me. I put positive affirmations in there and <laughs> crystals and everybody's like, Tasha, what are you doing? I'm like, you never know if that one affirmation or crystal will change their life. OK, back off. <laughs> For sure. 100 percent. And yeah. that's real shit right there, because it's like you don't know which one of those people is going to read that. Yeah. and be like, just have that you know aha what? moment. F this. F this. Yeah. She's right. This whatever this thing is that I just read. Yeah. Like be better than you were yesterday. That yes. could something like that. I've had plenty of those moments oh, where yeah. it just clicks and I'm like, Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's it's crazy because you think about like you think about all the things that we've been through in our life and what and we'll obviously we'll get into this in yeah. another podcast, <laughs> but like how many how many life changing moments in a in a very, very small way have you had in your life? And yeah. I think about it and I'm like so many. I could tell you 10 off the top of my head that I never forgot. Yes. Angie Durier. Do you yes. remember Angie Durier? Yeah, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. I'll give you a quick 30 second story. When we were in junior high school, yeah. ninth grade, I wore an all white shirt. And I've preached on this in church in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> this story. I didn't tell Angie. Shout out to you because I know you guys are. Anyway, so <laughs> Angie, she told me, hey, you look really good in all white. That was it. Yeah. That changed my my week, month, year. I was wearing white for like three weeks I straight. I was gonna after say, that. yeah. When I think of you, I think of you wearing like a lot of white. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm wearing a lot of white right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so I was like, oh my gosh, I look good in white. Yeah. But look what that did to just my demeanor. Look what it did to me just thinking about it right now. Yeah. Right. It's like a compliment, something and so white simple. is the color of being connected to the divine. A Absolutely. Power. It's, yeah. it's the connection of being washed clean. Right? Yes. Right. Yeah. A fresh start. Yep. Being, being, uh, new. Right. Yeah. And so rebirth. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 100%. And so anyway, so I'm at a trap house <laughs> back to the story. I'm back. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a trap house in Bremerton off of Kitsap way. And there's probably six or seven of us in there. And I am sick, extremely sick. And I think it's what we would call dope sick, where you haven't had drugs in a long enough time, so you're withdrawing. And that's what I think it is. Yeah. And then it doesn't go away after I got some more drugs and it didn't go away. And I'm like, what is going on? And so there's something else called cotton fever is what Mm. we call it. And so when you intravenously use drugs, right, in order to make sure that you're not pulling anything or putting anything into your system that is, I mean, not really anything as bad as heroin or meth, but yeah. like you would use a cotton to suck your drugs yeah. up through it and then that's how you would use it. But if you get something and you put it into your veins that is foreign outside of like liquid, whether it's like a piece of dirt or a piece of cotton or, yeah. or something, a piece of bacteria that shouldn't be there, you get sick really fast your body shuts down okay. and tries like your organs and your brain and your heart and your, and everything in your body just shuts down to try and protect yourself. That's what it's doing. It's trying to protect your things that are keeping you alive. And so it starts shaking. And what that's doing is it's heating your core temperature up to try and burn off and kill whatever is in there that is causing that. Yeah. And that's what I had going on. And finally I'm like, 
oh my gosh, I'm freaking dying. Yeah. Because eight hours later, I'm shaking in a ball on the couch. Yeah. And so the only way to feel better is to continue to do more drugs. But I was so sick, I couldn't go out and panhandle and get more money. Mm -hmm. And everybody who's on drugs is like, F you, bro. Like, we're not going to go out and do that for you because there's a bunch of selfish drug addicts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Tasha Joe. <laughs> Tasha Let's Joe. Let's hear it. <laughs> What's your middle name? <laughs> Michael. Oh, that's right. Austin Michael. <laughs> yeah. Tasha Joe. I was like, F this. And yeah. I shook myself off the couch. And I started knocking on the neighbor's doors, door to door to door to door until somebody gave me money. Wow. And I made up a story, whatever it was, but I got some Hispanic family four doors down to give me $10. I walked back to the trap house, bought more heroin, did some heroin, felt better for about 30 seconds and then was sick again. Yeah. There was a girl who showed up, right? I won't say her name, but she was there with her boyfriend. They showed up and they saw me. And I knew this girl, um, and she said, you look like shit. She, that's the first thing she said when, when she walked in. She goes, Austin, you look like shit. What's going on? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sick. And everybody's like, oh, is your blah, 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 this, that, and the third. And I'm yeah. just like, no, I'm, I'm really sick. Something's going on. She goes, okay, we're leaving here in 15 minutes. If you want, when I leave, I'll drop you off at the hospital. I said, please, drop me off at the hospital. So we go to the hospital. She drops me off. I go in there and just a quick backstory with the hospital. I had been there probably 30 times. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm in there looking for drugs. I'm trying to get morphine. Yeah. I'm trying to get dilated, mm -hmm. whatever I can, if I'm sick or whatever. Right. And so I'm in there and Dr. Lane, who I've seen probably 10 times in the last two years. Right. Yeah. At this time, yeah. this was, you know, probably nine years ago. Yeah. And Dr. Lane comes in and he goes, Mr. Nebuchadnezzar. What are we, what are we doing today? <laughs> What's our story today? Yeah. You know, because he's seeing on his, the nurse comes in, they triage me. I go to a room. The nurse says, what's wrong? You know, and I make up some bullshit. And then the doctor comes back and is like, you're bullshitting. Bye. But this time Dr. Lane comes in and he goes, Hey man, I'm looking at your vitals. I'm looking at your, your blood work that we've got. And he goes, you're in a little bit of trouble. And I go, he goes, I'm going to get you some pain medication. And I just started oh crying. And I just remember going, Doc, thank you so much. I promise you I'm not bullshitting. Like, I need pain medication yeah. badly. Yeah. And he goes, I know. And he goes, so that's when he, when Dr. Lane told me that he was going to give me pain medication, I knew I was in a lot of trouble. Because yeah. they would not give me shit there. Yeah. They weren't going to give me anything unless I was, they knew for a fact I was in some deep shit. Yeah. And that's where I was at. I was in deep shit. So he goes, but. Because I need to run some specific tests, I can't give you any pain medication until we finish these tests. Mm. So I had to get a CAT scan. I had to get an MRI. I had to get a spinal tap. Wow. So they stuck this big old needle into Ugh. my spine. And they have to, they make you sign a waiver that if they accidentally paralyze you, that you can't <laughs> sue the hospital. Oh, my God. I'm signing this. I didn't even care. Yeah. I was yeah. hurting so bad, Tasha. Yeah. And I was like... Bring it. Just get me through this because I was in so much pain and I felt so bad. And finally they come in and he's like, all right, all your tests are done. Boom. I got you, brother. And like he was like super cool about it. He's like, I'm going to give you the pain medication. They gave they were giving me Dilaudid, and I had IV in at that time. Yeah. They were giving me Dilaudid, another shot of Dilaudid, another shot of Dilaudid. And it wasn't phasing me because my tolerance was so high for yeah. opiates. Yeah. And Dr. Lane comes back in like after an hour and like four doses of Dilaudid later. And he's like, he's like, brother, he's like, I'm going to give you more Dilaudid, but I don't understand. Like your tolerance is so high. Like we got to try something else. And he's yeah. like, what I'm going to do is he goes, I'm going to give you more Dilaudid, but I'm also going to mix in some liquid Ativan. He's like, because I think what's going on is you're so wound up. Your body's so wound up because of everything that's going on. He goes, I need to get your, your anxiety down. Yeah. And then I think that pain medication will work its way into your system and you'll be okay. He gave me the Ativan and I passed out. Wow. That was it. Yeah. I woke up a couple hours later to him again and he goes, he goes, all right, man, all your test results came back. He goes, you're going to be here for a few days. So let's just get that out of the way right now. 
you got some things going on. We got to run some more tests, but you're definitely going to be here for a few days. We're going to admit you. You're going to go upstairs and they're going to take care of you up there. He goes, I hope the best for you. He's like, I'm so sorry to see you here. He was amazing. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'll never forget this man. And, uh, so they send me upstairs. And at that point in time, I had so much Dilaudid, so much Ativan. I was like, I was, a, I was out. I wake up like a week later, Tasha. And it's a different doctor. It's the infectious disease do- doctor. He's a specialist, right? Wow. And he comes in. He's, <laughs> I'll never forget it. He's this young Indian, like uh, Indian doctor, and he, probably not even 30 years old, wow. maybe early 30s, maybe. Super handsome, slicked back, black hair, Indian guy. And he's just like, what's up man and i'm <laughs> talking to me like he's just my boy yeah. he's like bro he's got his surgery cap on he's a surgeon and he mm-hmm. comes in and he's like hey i gotta take you downstairs and here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna jam a camera down your throat and it's gonna go into your heart and i gotta take some pictures and i'm going what oh. and he goes yeah no big deal he goes i do it all the time and i'm like okay cool he goes but i gotta put you out and i'm like okay he goes Are you good with that i'm like for sure man thank you and he's like okay i'll see you down there so, oh my so God. it was crazy. It yeah, was crazy, but this yeah. dude was super cool. I yeah. felt super comfortable. Yeah. I'm like this young gun, freaking handsome guy. I'm like, he probably drives a Ferrari or something yeah. for sure. <laughs> probably goes to the gym. Yeah. You know, probably got a couple side honeys, you know, <laughs> one of those guys. Yeah. You know, but he's really good at his job. Yeah. That's the vibe he's putting off. And I'm like, okay, I'm comfortable with it. So they bring me down to surgery and he goes, <laughs> this is so funny, dude. He's like, what's up, man? He's like, good to see you. Looking good. I'm like, am I looking good, doc? <laughs> really? I said, you're looking good, though. I remember joking with him. I was yeah. like, bro, you got the hair. I was like, you got a little bit of muscles going on, bro. And he started laughing. And he goes, hey, I'm going to give you this, this, and this. I'm going to give you fentanyl. I'm going to give you this, this, and it's going to make you pass out. And he goes, I want you to count down from 10. And he gives me, <laughs> he starts giving me this concoction of like, uh, what is it, anesthesiology? Yeah. That's supposed to, he's, that yeah. just everybody goes out. I'm nine, eight, seven, six, five. You're not passing I out. get to one and he's like, How are you still awake, bro? No way. Yeah, he's like, and I'm just wide awake. It doesn't yeah. even phase me. Because like, you've done so yes. oh, okay. And so he's like, I don't know how you're awake. He's like, I'm gonna give you another dose. Let's try it again. Count back from ten. Four times, Tasha. Shut I up. I swear. It took it four It took four doses. Four. Anesthesiology. Wow. And he's like, He's like, bro, the amount of drugs I'm giving you right now would kill a group of people. He's wow. like, I have no idea how you're even alive right now. He's like, this is freaking crazy. I've never had to deal with it on this level. He goes, I've seen drug addicts in here and I've had to give them. He goes, but your tolerance is crazy. And I, and it's not, I wasn't even doing that much. Yeah. Like to where, but for whatever reason, it was taking a lot. And finally he's like, all right. I'm doubling down. I'm giving you, he's like, I'm giving you the monster dose, bro. He's like, you're going to go out on this one. I promise you. And I sure enough, I did. And I wake up like three or four days later to him again. And he goes, Hey man, how are you feeling? And I'm like, good. I was like, I was like, how did it go? And he's like, Oh good. That was three days ago. Oh my God. (laughs) I'm like, what "What the fuck? (laughs) I don't remember. But he's like, he's like, yeah, you've been up. He's like, but you fall back asleep. You've been up, you've eaten. And he's like, the nurses said you've been up and you've talked to them. And I'm just like, what? I don't remember any of it. Wow. And, uh, and he, and he comes and when he, he's in there and he's talking to me and we're, he's just trying to get me to be awake until I'm fully conscious enough to have a conversation that I'll remember. And I go, so what's going on? And he goes, he goes, okay, first of all, I just want to say this. We don't have to open up your chest. Wow. He goes, so that's the good news. He goes, the bad news is you're going to be here for two months. Mm. And I go, what do you mean? I'm going to be here for two months. The doc, Dr. Lane told me I was only going to be here for a few days. He's like, yeah, dude, you've been here for over a week already. I'm like, okay, so what's going on? He goes, you got four what we call killers, right? He goes, yeah. you have four illnesses that could kill somebody. The first one is you have endocarditis, which is you have an infection in your heart, your tricuspis valve, which if, if Tasha, if you're me, Mm -hmm. right. And you're checking yourself on the right side of your chest, there's a heart valve. It's called the tricuspis valve. And on that valve inside that valve is a protein that is the size of a dime in that, in that heart valve. Okay. And it's disallowing 
uh, blood to go. I can't remember if it was out or in, Mm -hmm. but it was slowing the blood flow from, from my heart pumping out blood, disallowing it to go out or in. And, uh, and he goes, so that's a major issue. Yeah. I was like, oh, you think? <laughs> <laughs> for sure, bro. Yeah. And so he goes, so that's the first thing. What we're doing for that is we're going to give you what's called vanquamizin. He's like, imagine it. It's like the Hulk buster of antibiotics. But he goes, the thing with vanquamizin is it burns up your veins very quickly. It's very painful after about 24 hours. So I have to get a new IV every 36 hours. Every 36 wow. hours, I was getting a new, like, 22-gauge IV in my yeah. arm. And it would just burn up my veins. And I still have scars from them. Like, I have scars. Wow. And then one of my arms got infected and had a huge boil on it from the IV. And they had to treat that while I was in there. And uh, so he goes, that's how we're going to that's how we're gonna handle that. And then yeah. we'll, take it, we'll take it week by week. And, but he goes, we have you on a very, very large amount of pain medication right now, man. And he goes, that's an issue because you have drug addiction. And he goes, so we're going to have to wean you off that. But he goes, we're going to, and this is where some people say universe, I'm a God, Jesus guy. This is where I know God is real in my life because I had tried to get off a of drug so many times, Tasha. I had gone to detoxes and rehabs and all this stuff mm-hmm. and I could not freaking shake it. Yeah. Over the course of two months, they went from I went from an ungodly amount of pain medication to zero. And I walked out of that hospital, right? So the second thing was I had bacterial arthritis through my spine mm-hmm. and in my joints. And I still have some in my neck, but they think it's from wrestling. Yeah. Like the doctor's like, we don't know if it's from that or if it's from wrestling. He goes, it looks based on my experience it looks more like it's probably from wrestling and jujitsu and all the stuff that i do and uh and so he's like but don't worry about that we see that kind of in a lot of people he's like it's not a huge deal you're good now but back then it was bad it was everywhere i couldn't talk like when that doctor was coming in like i i would be talking like this i go okay and i'd have to Wow. And I have to take four or five breaths. Yeah. And then I could say another two or three words. And then I have to take four or five breaths, say a word, right? I couldn't walk because my my muscles and my bones were so weak. I couldn't walk. I could not walk. I had to have help going to the bathroom. I had to have all that stuff. The third thing was I had, uh, I had uh, pneumonia in both of my lungs. Mm-hmm. So full-blown pneumonia. And it's called the plethora or the plethora, which is like the outer lining of your lungs was, were so damaged. They were, they were talking about lung, lung transplants. Like I might have to have a lung transplant. I'm like, is that even a thing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, but my body recovered well and I didn't have to have that, but it was really painful because that's why it hurt so bad to breathe. And I couldn't breathe very good Mm -hmm. because all the, all the meth and the heroin and the drugs I were doing were masking all the symptoms. Yeah. So I wasn't feeling any of it until, until I got into the hospital and they hydrated me and got me the antibiotics and all that stuff. And then the last one was I had blood clots in my lungs. Wow. And so, damn Austin. yeah, I had blood clots in my lungs, both sides. And so they had to put me on blood thinners and all sorts of stuff. And so I was there for two months and we can maybe end with that yeah, and talk so about the following you're portion. You're definitely going to want to listen to the next episode because this is just the start. Austin wanted to share his journey on, you know, where he started and we haven't even gotten to where he's at today, what he's doing. You should feel so proud of yourself. Thank I'm you. so proud of you. Thank you. And I don't know your journey because I haven't been through you with it but just hearing it like you should feel so proud of yourself because there are so so many people who don't come out of situations like that yeah and and being on this podcast it's it's given it, it's a platform right yeah so you're you're in, you're you're inspiring people to not just share their stories yeah but share it in a way that is reaching other people who may either have gone through it are going through it now or know somebody who's going through Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And so we have this platform, the mystic movement, yes, right? That yes. is now reaching people and me specifically being able to share it is healing in itself. 
Yeah. Right? Every time and I get a sh- so much for sharing. Cause there are yeah. so many people who aren't comfortable yeah. sharing their stories. And when you're like, Oh no, I'm good. I'm here to share my story. I'm yeah. like, yes, fuck. Yes. <laughs> I want people like that. So yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's, that's my MO because like, like I said before, I'm a Jesus guy. He's my superhero. Absolutely. Like I love him. And, uh, and God is everything in my life. And, and, and I have, I will share, I have so much to share. I know, that's why I'm like, even, th- and you guys, this may be not just a part two, this may be a part three is what yeah, I'm thinking, sure. part 100%. one, part two, part three. And I will air these episodes back to back to back just so you can follow up with them. And normally I air my episodes every two weeks, bi-weekly, every once in a while I'll throw in a mini episode. However, I feel like Austin's story is so powerful and it's going to reach a lot of people. So these are going to get aired back to back as soon as you're I'll be available. Back tomorrow, yes, ladies yes, and gentlemen. absolutely. I was just going to say, back I was going to talk about on air, but afterwards, yeah, like I'm available this week. I want to get these episodes going because I'm dying to know our audience is dying to yeah. know, like, you know, we're, so we will end it with good, good point on that. Like, yeah, yeah. and can I say one last <laughs> thing? Absolutely. So just as a cliffhanger, <laughs> right. Right now, I'm getting ready to. I'm training as we speak for a MMA fight. Yes, which it's looking like September. It could be October, but it will likely be September. I also own my own business. I have two kids. My life you're is killing beautiful, it. You're doing it. But there's a lot of crazy stuff in between. <laughs> and Whose juicy life isn't stuff. crazy? You Everybody. Know? Everybody's yeah. got a crazy life. But I truly believe it's the people. Like you know, God doesn't. God gives people the hardest shit to. I'm trying to. You know that fa- that. God what? only gives uh, the strong- his strongest yes. warriors the hardest challenges yes. type thing. Yes, and we have been through very yeah. hard and difficult things. And, Everybody. And, you know, again, your mess is your message. And We're I, getting a sign up yes. in here yes. for that, by the way. I, might I do want a neon that. sign Heck on yeah. my back wall. But, oh my gosh, Austin, thank you so much. You're and welcome. we're going to be back tomorrow or yes, the next no, day. We're going to get tomorrow. these three. I will be here tomorrow. For Perfect. Sure. So these are going to be aired this week, up and running ASAP. So, yeah, we will see you all soon. Bye.